From Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Saturday. It's 8 o'clock this Saturday morning. Thank you so much for starting your weekend Good morning. With us. I got to say, though, you, you look at the forecast and uh. it's just... 100 and so degree day after 100. It used to be at least like June and July was like 100 degree day after 100 degree day. 100 degree, Sarah, would kind of be a cool down. Yeah, Mother Nature is like full on, okay, if we're going to end summer. <laughs> Let's I see how hot we can make it. 105 is the new 100 because we have been at 106 for the last three days in a row. Today we'll make our 13th 100 degree day for the year, the most on record for a year. Uh, but it is going to be hot today and fire danger will be high. So you all know the drill. This forecast should be very, very familiar by now. Right now outside, some morning clouds to start your day. You know, it's not too bad if you want to get your day started earlier. Go for the walk right now rather than a few hours when it's going to be sweltering hot outside 82 south southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Take a look at that relative humidity. 82% is the relative humidity now, but in the afternoon that relative humidity is going to be anywhere from uh, 20 to 30%. That's when we start to get into the fire danger. When we have the drier conditions in the afternoon, that's when it's going to be the hottest and we are going to have a stout wind from the south at about 10 to 15 today. So fire danger is high all weekend long. Please do your part to avoid creating and spreading fires. 105 today for the high temperature, likely going to be a record, and 104 tomorrow. So a very hot week, a weekend ahead for us, and a hot week next week for that matter as well. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to be taking a look at how many records we have broken so far in a row. It is impressive number. I'll have those details and, of course, your forecast and a look at the Perseid meteor shower, which is going to be peaking tonight into early tomorrow. Details ahead. Max. Thank you, Sarah. I'm now turning to the investigation into President Joe Biden's son, the Attorney General Merrick Garland, appointing a special counsel to look into Hunter Biden. ABC's Jay O'Brien has the latest on what this all means and the reaction from politicians on both sides. This morning, the investigation into Hunter Biden intensifying after Attorney General Merrick Garland named David Weiss, the U.S. attorney in Delaware, as special counsel, giving him independent oversight over his years-long investigation into the president's son. Upon considering his request, as well as the extraordinary circumstances relating to this matter, I have concluded that it is in the public interest to appoint him as special counsel. Hunter Biden's attorney saying that Weiss's new designation doesn't change our understanding of his authority and they expect a fair resolution not infected by politics. Mr. Weiss has the authority he needs to conduct a thorough investigation and to continue to take the steps he deems appropriate independently. Garland's decision coming after a plea deal between Hunter Biden and prosecutors that would have covered tax fraud and gun charges publicly collapsed last month. In court filings the same day of his appointment, Weiss telling the judge in that case the two sides are now at an impasse in plea negotiations, signaling the president's son may be headed for trial. Hunter Biden's lawyers given until Monday to respond. Republicans on Capitol Hill who pressed the Justice Department to do more still pledging to do their own investigation. That's Jay O'Brien reporting. Back here at home, a 37-year-old man sentenced to 35 years in prison for shooting his ex-girlfriend. Lamar White found guilty of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon causing serious bodily injury. The Bear County District Attorney's Office says White harassed the woman and her family despite them breaking up in late 2020. In 2021, he left his ex in threatening voicemails. She showed up to his apartment, called police to report his threatening behavior. White reportedly came out of the apartment and started shooting at her vehicle, shooting her five times. Two of those bullets remain lodged in her body. Award-winning Confluence Park recognized for its amazing architecture in 2019 by the American Institute of Architects has been vandalized after its iconic 3D model of the park was stolen. Nothing but metal screws are left on the concrete slab right there where the model of the famous park once stood. April Monteroso, the publisher of Live from the South Side, which focuses on the South Side culture, calls Confluence Park a South Side gem that's now that now has a missing piece. You're like, why? Why take something from the community, something that's used in education, something that represents 
our Southside community. The River Foundation tells us the 3D model it was bolted down, but that didn't stop someone from removing it. They have filed a police report with SAPD. If it doesn't turn up, they hope to replace the model. Among all questions being asked about those giant buoys that the state placed in the Rio Grande River, some of them center around the environment. So Jonathan, Jonathan Cotto reports that the buoys now raising a lot of concerns over the potential impact on the river's natural flow and the aquatic ecosystems. Dr. Adriana Martinez is a geofluvial morphologist or a person who studies rivers. My particular river topic right now is actually the U.S.-Mexico border fence. And so I've published two peer-reviewed studies now on how the border fence impacts flooding, specifically at Eagle Pass. Between 2008 and 2009, approximately 620 miles of fencing was built along the U.S.-Mexico border. I was already studying um, how rivers are impacted by human influences, and so I knew that the fence was going to hurt the river as well. Um, and it's only magnified since then. Since then, empty shipping containers, additional fencing, razor wire, and even buoys have been installed along the floodplain in the Rio Grande. The fence and um, the containers themselves are channeling water in different directions when flooding is occurring. And so that's the first thing. And according to Dr. Martinez, changing the flow of the river can have dire consequences. That means we're going to be changing depth of the water that becomes dangerous for people if they're not expecting it. We're changing erosion, which means we're changing the shape of the channel itself. She says it's also disrupting water quality. The whole region uses that water um, for drinking, right? That's our source of water. And so anytime you're moving sediment in the river, you're affecting water quality downstream as well. But Mother Nature is resilient, according to Dr. Martinez, but adds proper action needs to be taken immediately. We spent a million dollars on these buoys. We should spend at least a million dollars doing stream restoration on the damage that we did, replanting that vegetation, reestablishing those islands that got taken out. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Back here at home, the Bear County Sheriff's Office asking for your help identifying the man on your screen. So he's accused of stealing a Home Depot credit card, spending nearly $5,000. Surveillance video from the store obtained by BCSO, and it shows the suspect wearing a green polo Ralph Lauren hat and shirt, glasses, full beard. If anyone has any information that can help in the case, you're asked to contact BCSO. That number on the bottom of your screen, 210-335-6000. And San Antonio police are in the process of tracking a suspect who they say has been targeting people on the northwest side demanding money. In one case, officers say an elderly man was pumping gas at a station near Hebner Road in I-10 when a driver in a red car came up and demanded the victim hand over his credit card. When the victim refused, police say a suspect shot him with a BB gun before taking off. If you know something that can help officers solve this case, call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen right there, 210-224-STOP. And happening today, the San Antonio Food Bank is partnering up with the Health and Human Services Community Partner Program to host a community event to help people with their Medicaid renewals. HHSC staff will be available to answer any questions related to the federal continuous Medicaid coverage. There will also be other services available as well as food, vendors, and back-to-school resources for children. So we're going to be doing a breakfast, which is cereal, and then we're going to be providing a sandwich during lunch. And we do also have school supplies as well. So besides the uh, renewal assistance, we also have haircuts for children. We're also going to be giving out meals to children under the age of 18. And then we have several other uh, resources and vendors that will be here today. Bikes will also be up for raffle during the event. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., no registration is needed to attend. Also happening today, the City of San Antonio's Office of Sustainability giving away free fruit trees. This is happening at the Pearl Farmers Market, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's in honor of Fruit Tree Adoption and Sustainability Day. Gardopia Gardens hosting an educational class and giving organic gardening tips. Pearl Farmers Market located at 312 Pearl Parkway. San Antonio Zoo is hosting Locals Day for Bear County residents. That means tickets are just $8. If there are multiple people in your party who are trying to get discounted tickets, each person will need to provide proof of Bear County residency. San Antonio Zoo members can bring a friend for free 
every weekend through Labor Day for the zoo's BFF days. Aww. The zoo is also offering free unlimited soft drinks, Powerade, and water through Sunday. And if you are headed to the zoo or headed to the mm. farmer's market to get the free fruit tree, try to go early. Early. Avoid all of this heat because it is only 810 and it's already 82 degrees out. Are you a big Words with Friends guy? You know, I used to be. I've, yeah. uh, I've moved on to Quirtle and Wordle. Okay, well, yeah. you can play Words with Friends in person. Did you know that there is a Scrabble Club meetup right here in San Antonio. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can join. Did you know that there is a competitive Scrabble club that meets once a week right here in San Antonio and one of their players even won at the national championship level? Let's go check it out inside. Every Thursday at 6 p.m., a group of serious Scrabble players meet to play Scrabble at Lions Field Adult Center. The group size ranges from four to a dozen players from different backgrounds, from librarians, engineers to physicians. They use timers, keep score, and even have flair to their boards and letter bags. But here's the thing, anyone can join them. So if you think you're pretty good at Scrabble or not, or just love to play, they are open to teaching new players and can help you learn the rules and cheat codes. I've been out of the game for a while. I, I, I haven't played any with any of the new words, so this has been really helpful. They also have the Scrabble player dictionary on hand when there are challenges to words played. One of their players even won her division at the National Scrabble Championship. So come make words with friends in person. I like that. Words with friends in person. Yeah, I... I was always really bad at words with friends. I'm not a, I'm not a, Scrabble. Scrabble kind not a of person. spelling word wizard. You're not a word wizard. <laughs> nope. I'm no not. word wizards you here. No say. word wizards here. Um, just a regular wizard. I will take this time <laughs> on San Antonio television to say, mm. I finally beat my husband in Scrabble. Oh. It took a long time. Michael's nice. so much better at Scrabble than me, but I finally He's beat him. pretty good at board games. Yeah, he is a word wizard. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of words, hot. Hot and humid for the start of the day, but in the afternoon it'll be dry. That'll bring us some fire danger. Take a look at the graphic on your screen. San Antonio for the past eight days has either tied or beaten record highs. The last three days we've been at 106. Since August 6, we've seen a high temperature of 105 or greater. This is not a normal summer by any means for us. To see records fall one after one after one after one is really impressive. And guess what today? We're going to do it again. 105 is the forecast high for the day. That'll beat a record set back in 1969 when we went to the moon of 104 degrees. Take a look at the forecast, though, over the coming days. Not all that much cooler. And in fact, we'll challenge records Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday as well. So the hot weather continues. And again, the fire danger continues today, too. Got to remind everybody, red flag warning all across South Central Texas as fire danger will be highest in the afternoon when the relative humidity is the lowest and the winds are going to be from the south at about 15 miles per hour. Outside right now, the most pleasant part of the day, and it's still pretty muggy. It's 82 degrees out there right now. South winds at about 10 miles per hour. Already feels like it's close to 90 degrees this morning. Good morning in Rock Springs, where it's 75. Not too bad up in Rock Springs this morning. 83 in Del Rio, 83 in Catula, 82 in Pleasanton. It's 84 in Gonzales and it's 79 in Hondo this morning. You can see that the hill country shaves off a couple of degrees there with those higher elevations, 78 in Comfort and in Bandera, and it's 79 in Converse right now. But take a look at how quickly we warm up. By 10, we're already going to be some five to 10 degrees warmer than what we are right now, 86 at 10. We've got clouds out there right now, but by noon, it's gonna be mostly sunny and 94. 105 for the high temperature, five, 6 p.m. Uh, this afternoon afternoon. A lot of people are going to be out and about because it's tax free weekend. Get an early start if you can. If you can't in the afternoon, it's going to be a hot trip from your car 
to uh, that store, especially because the asphalt will be much hotter. 109 in Del Rio, 107 in Pleasanton. It's going to be 102 in Kerrville, 108 in Creso Springs, 105 in Gonzales, and 104 in Canyon Lake. Hey, it's not all bad news. Stargazers, the Perseid meteor shower is going to be peaking this weekend. Tonight after midnight and in the pre dawn hours of tomorrow, that's going to be the best time frame. We should have clear skies after midnight. Clouds will really only start to get into the picture close to about three, four o'clock in the morning. Best to find a dark viewing spot away from the city bright lights. If you get in a good spot, if you're lucky, you could see up to 90 meteors an hour under those dark skies. And by the way, the moon is nearing uh, its new moon phase, so shouldn't be too much of an issue out there as well. Take a look at temperatures in the coming days. Again, we're going to be near 105 every single day. Fire danger continues. I know what you're looking at, that 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm on Tuesday. We'll talk more about that in the next half hour. Don't get your hopes up. 20% is very, very low chance. Mm. But across somewhere across South Central Texas, it will rain on Tuesday. It's just probably going to be north of San Antonio. More details coming up. Okay, we can do it. Yeah. Okay. I love the positivity. Yeah. Yeah. There's the only way. <laughs> somewhere in North San Antonio might get rain. <laughs> We're optimistic. Time now, 819, 82 degrees. Okay, talks between Hollywood writers and studios has the Writers Guild of America evaluating a counter proposal. We'll explain after the break. All right, good morning. Welcome back. The Writers Guild of America received a counterproposal from the major Hollywood studios just yesterday. It says it's now evaluating that offer and expects to have a response next week. It comes after both sides recently returned to the negotiating table, working to end a strike that hit 100 days on Thursday. Late night television shows haven't aired new episodes since May. And now it'll push back fall TV premieres. Both sides still remain pretty far apart on key issues. Some of those issues, pay, residuals, mandatory staffing, and a lot of other employment concerns. I know streaming really is at the heart of these talks. I know, and honestly, I think it's like a little bit of a drought. Yeah. Personally, there's not a lot of new content that's oh, good Oh, so you're content. seeing, like, as a viewer, you're yeah, seeing Yeah, as a viewer, I'm like, I'm like, oh, well, so I hope something, they come to an agreement soon and uh, the writers get what they deserve. Yeah, for the good of Sarah Spivey's and Sarah Costa's viewing experiences. Right, we need we need our stream shows. We need more content. Yeah. All right, time now, <laughs> 823, 82 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, have you seen Barbie yet? Yes. You saw it? Yeah. Okay, one to ten. What do you think? I'm putting you on the hot seat here. Eight. Okay. Okay. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. That's it was pretty good. good. It was funny. All right. Cute. Time now. <laughs> Barbie Mania. Sarah Spivey laughing. <laughs> Sarah, wait, wait, wait. Spivey, what are you thinking over there? Sarah, Sarah and I have gotten into it. I liked it, the Barbie movie yeah. a ton. I'd say it eight. I liked like it more good. than Sarah. Okay. Let's just say that. Yeah. All right. We should probably start reading the story. So, Barbie Mania <laughs> taking over the world, bringing her here. Look at this. Favorite color is pink, and obviously we're seeing that. I think that's a cheesesteak. Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I'm... It, I don't know. Okay, so what you're seeing is you're seeing that color on everything, including f food. So what's the latest cra uh, craze? It's pink cheesesteak that's courtesy of the New York restaurant jumping on the Barbie bandwagon. Mm. And now viral Malibu Barbie dream drizzle cheesesteak. Oh, <laughs> all your typical cheese steak ingredients. This reminds me of that purple ketchup in the late 90s, early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. here's the thing. You know, this isn't Philly because we would never do that <laughs> to make it Barbie worthy. <laughs> it's it a even sin. Has, well, here you go. It even has edible glitter and a pink sauce made from red mm -mm. dragon fruit no. house made ranch. Mm -mm. How dare you besmirch <laughs> the name of a Philly cheesesteak with that? Says the guy from Philly. Oh, that was just embarrassing. All right, time now, 828, 82 degrees. Okay, after two recent incidents of people exchanging things that ended in shooting, Sheriff Javier Salazar is reminding people to be safe when it comes to these meetups with strangers. We'll tell you what he's advising. That's coming up. And obviously the talk of the last... I want to say like last three weeks, this overwhelming heat. Right now, 82 degrees, high humidity. What is the rest of the day going to look like? How hot will it get? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back and happy weekend. It is just about 8.32 this morning. It is Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your Good weekend morning. with us. Good morning. 
All right, so the last few days, mm -hmm. what have been your secrets to beat the heat, especially with two pets? Oh, okay, well, like last night, my husband took one of the dogs to Lowe's when he was had to go by. Smart. So like, you know, they get out yeah. indoors though, and either really late at night or early in the morning, we take them for a little run on the bike. Okay. But early or like maybe like at 8.45, 9 o'clock at night, but still that asphalt mm -hmm. is still very hot. And Sarah, you know, when we've been having not just a triple digit days, but like 105, 105, 105, that urban heat island effect is very real. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. I mean, today a lot of people are going to be feeling it as uh, it is a uh, tax-free weekend. A lot of people are going to be shopping, trying to find that parking space. Uh, it is going to be very hot out and about, especially between noon and 6 p.m. Get out if you can right now because it's not too bad. Take a look at temperatures. 82 degrees in San Antonio, 83 Castroville, 79 in Bernie, and 78 in Bandera. You can see a little bit more cloud cover for the higher elevations uh, of the hill country early this morning. And we'll have mostly cloudy skies for the next couple of hours. Then by the afternoon, it is going to be completely sunny and hot. 94 at noon, but 105 for the high temperature this afternoon. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's bad news. The good news is this is the lowest pollen count I've seen in a long time. Molds are the only allergen present. They're low. They're below 100. Not too bad in the pollen count. And we do not have Saharan dust in the air either. 105 for the high today, 104 tomorrow, but high fire danger. I'd like to remind everyone to do their part to avoid creating and spreading fires. Make sure to fully extinguish cigarettes. And uh, uh, again, just let's do our part to, to prevent those grass fires from spreading. Otherwise, it is going to be hot. Coming up in the forecast, there is a small chance for rain on Tuesday this week. I say small chance there, but I'll tell you the more details coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. San Antonio firefighters working overnight to put out a fire near Grace Lutheran Church. This happened around two this morning. The fire started in a building that's used for different events held by Grace Lutheran Church. SAFD says they got a report that a car drove by and threw a bottle that was on fire towards the front door. Firefighters were able to stop the fire without spreading to other parts of the church. Nobody was injured. Bear County Sheriff Javier Sells are reminding the public about safe exchange zones for online sales. This after two exchanges ended in shootings. Sheriff Sells are referenced the two incidents that occurred Tuesday night where an online sale exchange ended in a shooting. One of those shootings killing a 19 year old and a 17 year old. Another incident at a fast food restaurant at FM 78 and Walsham. A 17 year old and a woman agreed to meet to sell a necklace. The suspect shot the teen several times. The suspect in the case actually told the victims uh, to drive around to the back of the restaurant uh, to another location because it was too crowded there to conduct the transaction. Should have been a red flag for these for these victims in this case. Sheriff Salazar says places like BCSO substations and San Antonio Police Subdivisions, they provide a safe, well-lit spot for these types of exchanges to occur. James Stewart was sentenced 75 years for shooting and killing the mother of his child back in 2020. It took the jury less than two hours to find Stewart guilty, and yesterday they took about the same time to sentence him. We, the jury, assess confinement at the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a period of 75 years. Stewart will now be transferred to a Texas prison. He will be almost 88 years old when he is eligible for parole. Well, the city of San Antonio planning to ramp up the use of a strategy in handling our homelessness problem. And some members of our community, they call the way that we handle it controversial. So in a recent budget priority survey, San Antonio's rated homeless outreach and encampments as their top investment priority ahead of streets and even ahead of affordable housing. With that in mind, city staff has proposed adding money to clean up 700 homeless camps around San Antonio in the 2024 fiscal year. The city manager added that that's not all. There's also going to be federal dollars coming into the city to help tackle the issue. And there are now more places for people who don't have homes so they can go. The death toll from the Maui wildfires has risen to 80 people. Governor Josh Green says the confirmed fatalities are people who made it out of the buildings they were in as they tried to escape the fire.
The Hawaii Emergency Management Agency says no one at the state or county level attempted to activate the warning sirens. However, other layers of the emergency warning system were triggered, including mobile phone alerts and messages on TV and radio stations. Officials say the failure to trigger the all hazard emergency siren system was largely because of just how fast those flames were moving as they worked to coordinate response on the ground. Well, a fifth person turning themselves in on charges related to that Montgomery, Alabama riverfront brawl. Sure, you've seen it. We've talked about it before. This is 42 year old Reggie Ray now in jail on a misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. He'll be in court on Monday. Three other men and also one woman facing charges in that Saturday incident. Now the fight stemmed from a dispute over a dockside parking spot and that quickly escalated to that widespread brawl. Well, pencils are sharpening, books being dusted off and classrooms opening back up for students around the Alamo City. So KSAT hosted a town hall event to help answer several questions many parents, students and school staff may have going into this new school year. And while you know your child at home, there's another person looking out for them with you, their teachers. Elena Zavala, a sixth grade teacher at Jones Middle School, talks about the warning signs teachers look out for when it comes to mental health and their students. Another would be withdrawal from their peers, their friends that they normally hang out with, as well as a, um, a lack in their schoolwork. So not showing as much effort or not completing assignments like they used to and just having a personality change. And we get to know our students very, very well, and so you can tell right away if there's something off. Another person looking out for your child, the school counselor. We talked about what that perspective looks like and so much more across the board on our live stream, ksat.com. You can still watch it in its entirety. Just head to the article on the webpage. And speaking of school starting, we're actually going to be joined by the Southside ISC superintendent tomorrow on Leading SA. Don't miss it. If you have questions, you can submit them right now. But right now, time is just about 839, 82 degrees. After the break, the San Antonio Food Bank and the National Park Service turning to the past to get fresh produce growing during this ongoing drought. We'll tell you what and how, what they're using and how they're doing it. Yeah, and speaking of the drought, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Look, there are so many people impacted by this hot weather, but you got to think about our ranchers and farmers in and around the area. Could we see any chances of rain in the coming days, weeks? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. Severe drought across Bear County. It's a big cause of concern on how fresh fruit will continue to grow, but the San Antonio Food Bank leaning into history to beat the heat. Three fields at Mission San Juan and the San Antonio Missions National Historical Park are using acequias to provide fresh food and preserve history. It is the same irrigation system Spanish colonists relied on in the 1700s. The San Antonio Food Bank and the National Park Service, they're partnering up to keep these gardens growing and grow even through the drought. So this system and plants, well, it's working. These fields, they're surviving. 300 years ago, this acequia was irrigating these farmlands and feeding San Antonio. 300 years later, this acequia is irrigating these farmlands and feeding San Antonio. This farm has been in place for about five years now. They're finally starting to understand what does well with our soil and the heat and, frankly, what doesn't. Pecans, figs, squash, well, they are three foods that they've actually had the most success with. You guys both have homes, you have beautiful yards. What have you seen success with and what have failed? She's the... The gardener. Um, it's, it's been a tough summer. Mm -hmm. I usually don't plant during the... veg. Uh, I don't plant any produce usually okay. during the summer. You're just trying to keep it surviving and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to just do a lot of hand watering. I'm bringing a lot of my stuff that is in pots into the shade during peak sun because they're getting yeah. scorched yeah. by the sun after 2 p.m. It's true. Um, it's been it's been tough. It's been a very, uh, very tough summer heat wise. I mean, we this will probably be our ninth day in a row where we have tied or broken a record high. Yeah, and we've had 13 today will be 13 105 degree days in San Antonio or greater. And here's a look across the state right now. You can see that it is fairly dry for most around Texas. There are some showers out in West Texas and in the Panhandle. And before I even draw the high pressure system on here, I'm sure you can actually see where it is. It's 
right here as all of this uh, rain is going up and over this high. That heat high compressing the air, pushing down on the atmosphere, and this is a look at the forecast highs for the day today. You can see across San Angelo, it's going to be 106 degrees. Here in San Antonio, it's going to be just as hot as Phoenix, Arizona, uh, because they're getting a low pressure system there off of the coast of California, but we are experiencing that heat high right overhead. Uh, and unfortunately, again, we are going to see our 47th 100 degree day today. We're still in fourth place behind 2011 for the number of 100 degree days. We'll only need 10 more to tie it. We only need 13 more triple digit days to get to first place for the most 100 degree days in a year. That'll be hard for us to do still, but it is within the realm of possibility. And just a reminder that we are experiencing high fire danger across most, if not all of the state of Texas. Most of the state of Texas is under high or very high fire danger, according to the Texas A&M Forest Service. You can see that locally it's areas like Del Rio, Pearsall, the Hill Country, out toward Gonzales and up toward Travis County, which have the highest fire danger. And as we we zoom in here around San Antonio. It's generally north of 1604. So for areas like Bulverde, Bernie, Sisterdale, Canyon Lake, Comfort, these are the areas that have the highest fire danger, but fire danger is high everywhere. So we really got to do our part to prevent uh, fires from starting and spreading. 82 degrees outside right now. You can see we're starting with some clouds this morning, a lot like yesterday, but very quickly these skies clear because of that high pressure system and it becomes hot. So take advantage of temperatures in the low 80s and upper 70s at the moment. 77 in Rio Medina, 79 in Bandera. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 79 degrees, 83 in New Braunfels, 80 in Yavaldi, and 87 in Divine. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast see clearing skies quickly by 10. It's going to be partly cloudy in 86, mostly sunny by noon and 94 in the afternoon. We'll get into the triple digits as early as 2 p.m. and we'll be looking at a high of 105 winds today will be from the south a bit breezy at 10 to 15 miles per hour uh, that will uh, unfortunately make the fire danger higher during that peak heat of the afternoon when it's the hottest driest and our winds are going to be pretty breezy looking at forecast highs today generally 105 to 109 and as far as rain chances go there's a very small chance on Tuesday for an isolated shower or storm our chances again only 20 percent if you're hoping and wishing hope and wish for Tuesday we'll be back uh, after the break okay don't forget to pick up your KSAT pigskin classic tickets the first game we cannot believe this kicks off in two weeks that's Friday August 25th followed by a triple header on Saturday August 26th so Pull out your phone, scan this QR code on your screen to check out the lineup and buy your tickets. And you can also help the San Antonio Food Bank at this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. Our KSAT community team collecting donations at the Alamo Dome during all four games. We have a list of the food bank's 12 most requested items and a link to make a one-time donation right now on KSAT.com. I love that we're doing this. Not yeah. only the amazing four games, bigger and better than last year. I'm excited to go, but also philanthropic ventures that we're helping out with. It's going to be just such a fun weekend. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're going to be, of course, live for the pep rally, pumping everyone up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be live our show. We're taking our show yeah. live to the Alamo Dome yeah. for our GMSA. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. NFL combine going yeah. on time now. <laughs> just about 8.52, 83 degrees. Okay, coming up next, back to school shopping can be costly, especially when it comes to buying clothes. So thrifting might be an option to stay on the less expensive side. We'll see how much $25 will get you at a thrift shop. So if you're worried about the costs that come with back to school sh uh, clothes shopping, you, we may have a solution for you. So this tax free weekend, Goodwill is cutting its clothes prices in half for back to school shopping. So Meryl Moritz wanted to see what you could get for just $25. From here, here is thrifted. Jylan is a thriftinista curating her first class look on a second hand budget. I mean, you can find really cool pieces. She's shopping Goodwill. So is Gloria Villanueva. Well, I'm shopping for back to school. Yeah. It gets pricey, doesn't it? Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And she's shopping for four kids, including Nadia. And what grade are you going to be in? 
Kinder. Kino. You can find things for one dollar, two dollars. Instead of going to the store, they will be ten dollars for just a shirt. The retail industry estimates the average family will spend 357 bucks just on clothing for back to school. So challenge time. We wondered what you could get for back to school clothing for just 25 bucks. Now keep in mind this weekend at Goodwill, Friday through Sunday, clothing is half price so you can get more and it's tax free weekend. Texans will pay no sales tax on most clothing, shoes, and school supplies. That's about $8 saved for every 100 spent. Back to our challenge of shopping on the cheap. So Emma here is going into seventh grade and she's accepted our challenge. So $25 is what we're gonna give you to see what all you can find for back to school. So you feeling confident about that? What do you think you'll be able to find? Uh, I think I'll be able to find lots of shirts. And she's off. For many families, inflation is squeezing the back to school budget. So thrift stores can be a creative way to save hundreds of dollars. We found a wide range of brands you typically find at the mall. What's the best thing you ever scored? Right now, I'm really into long skirts. And there's the pure thrill of the hunt. So of course, I had to do a little shopping. I picked up t-shirts, shorts, jeans, blouses, all of this, 20 bucks. And when it's half price, just 10. Rummaging the racks can be overwhelming. So what's the key? I think the key to finding things at a Goodwill is to come with an open mind and then to take your time as well. Goodwill's Liddy Castillo says they are expecting a lot of business, inflation aside. I think people are always looking for, for bargains no matter what the economy is. And what we're finding as well is a younger generation is really shopping sustainably. Reusing and recycling keeps mountains of clothing out of the landfills. Time to check on Emma. She's got a handful. One, two, three, four, five shirts. Plus a Sherpa pullover all within budget. Smart shopper. And this weekend, she can double her back-to-class haul. A little lesson in savings before school even starts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I love Goodwill. I love Goodwill. I love that Marilyn did that. I think that was a great story. Yeah, I mean, my husband and I, we shop at Goodwill yeah. all the time. Like, especially when you're, like, going through size changes and you know, you're going through the seasons. Mm -hmm. Goodwill has some good stuff. Perfect for back to school. Time now, just about 8.58, 83 degrees. Vintage is also always cool too. We'll be right back. Welcome back, we're gonna take a live look out at the Alamo Colleges and Palo Alto College, celebrating the new Southside Education and Training Center. Very exciting, our photographer Santiago is out there giving us that live look inside their new facility. So coming up, we'll tell you exactly how this benefit, this will benefit Southside students. And we are taking a live look out at the Alamo City. You can almost see the humidity mm. in the air. 83 degrees now. What does the rest of the day look like? How hot will it get? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. Good morning. It is 9 o'clock. It is Saturday. It is August 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So we talk about back to school up, and yeah. it, it's crazy to think that some of these kids are gonna go back to school and it's gonna be like 106 degrees. You know what's really hard is when you go back to school shopping, a lot of the stores have their fall line mm. out. <laughs> we get like maybe yeah. inside because the classrooms are probably pretty cold. Yeah. Uh, you know, you see a lot of the kids wearing the hoodies and stuff, but outside, please don't wear your hoodie, especially if you're walking home or to the school bus, because Sarah, this heat is the triple digit 105 trend continuing. Yes, it is. Yeah. But you mentioned stores and fall decor. I have already seen a lot of pumpkins and pumpkin candles and those kinds of things. I am not at the mood yet for the fall spice because it is spicy enough outside right now. 105 for the high temperature today. That'll likely be a record outside right now. You can see there are some clouds out there this morning and let's look at them from space. Here's a look at the satellite imagery. You can see it's overcast to start the day in Uvalde and Carrizo Springs. That overcast start going to keep your afternoon temperatures down a couple of degrees, but it's still going to be well over 100 out west of San Antonio. Uh, you can see that up in the hill country. There's a few clouds as well. Even around San Antonio, some of those puffy cumulus clouds, but they're starting to break up. It's already 84 degrees in San Antonio, 79 in Bandera, 81 in Bolverde, and 82 in Canyon Lake. Now, it's humid outside right now, too. Relative humidity is high, but this afternoon, 
relative humidity comes down into the 20 to 30 percent range. Fire danger will be highest today this afternoon, so we're going to have to be careful this afternoon. We do not want to do anything to create or spread grass fires. High fire danger all weekend long, 105 for the high temperature, a little bit more cloud cover out there right now. That's why I've been able to shave off a whole degree from the forecast high, but still 105. That heat will get you in the afternoon. Be very careful as you're heading out and about for tax free weekend this weekend. Now looking ahead to the week again, likely going to see some records fall once again this week. Another hot week ahead with only a small sliver of a chance for rain on Tuesday. I'll have all the details coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Alamo College's district in Palo Alto College unveiling the new Southside Education and Training Center. Our photographer Santiago is live there now giving us a look. So the nearly 49,000 square foot facility will serve as home for Palo Alto's college's new nursing program, the Ready to Work initiative and more. In May of 2017, Bear County voters approved a 450 million capital improvement bond for the Alamo Colleges with 23 million million allocated for this new center. So built on land provided by Southside Independent School District it is also part of the Alamo Colleges Education and Training Centers designed to increase access to higher, higher education services for residents of underserved sectors of Bear County. Well, Texas prison guard says she was forced to stay on shift while having labor contractions and now Texas is fighting compensation for her stillbirth. So the Texas guard, who was seven months pregnant, told her supervisor she needed to leave, go to the hospital when she started feeling labor-like pain. Supervisors told her she would have to wait until someone could take over her spot, but no one came for hours. They then lied about, they then accused her of lying about her pain, according to the federal lawsuit against the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and prison officials. The guard is now suing the TDCJ and the supervisors. She argues that the state caused the death of her child. A three-year-old child has died on a bus with asylum seekers. The Illinois Health Department confirmed the news this week. The bus left Brownsville, Texas, and had been en route to the Chicago area. It's unclear how that child died. Federal authorities are investigating what happened. And the Biden administration kickstarting the U.S. carbon removal industry right here in Texas. The Department of Industry Energy is announcing a $1.2 billion investment to basically suck carbon dioxide out of our air. The money will fund two new direct air capture hubs in Texas and Louisiana. They're going to build huge vacuum cleaners that essentially suck up carbon dioxide from our air and store it underground. The Department of Energy says this plan could remove the equivalent of, get this, nearly 500,000 gas cars off the road every year. And the Texas House Committee report outlines pat possible paths forward for school vouchers here in our state. The 15-member committee released a report that also made a number of recommendations on school finance, the teacher workforce, and student outcomes. The committee didn't endorse outright the legislature passing a school voucher program, uh, but it would allow parents who, to use taxpayer money to send their kids to private schools, kind of like a voucher program. If lawmakers were to approve such a program, the report said it should be smaller in scale than the one proposed, and Governor Greg Abbott said he will not accept that possible reduced option. A final push to help students in need Last Chance Ministries annual back to school bash is today. While they've gotten lots of donations and support, they still need backpacks and other school supplies. Pastor Jimmy Robles says relying on faith has never let them down. We have a few, a few here and there that we still need, but I mean, everything really came to pass and tomorrow's a big day. We're excited. We maxed out, I think, at 3,000 already. So just people are going to be welcome no matter what, even if you're registered or not. So we don't want to uh, discourage anyone from coming. Pastor Robles says students who registered will have a backpack, but they are expecting additional people to show up today. So they're still accepting donations. We have the link to donate on our website. 
All right, so talking about back to school, a lot of students already finishing their first week back in the classroom for the new school year. And parents are worried about how safe they'll be. San Antonio's largest school district, Northside ISD, has rolled out a list of safety initiatives. Additional NISD police officers will be added to its current force, and all campuses will have silent panic buttons for emergencies. High schoolers will be required to wear ID badges, and students and staff can also expect routine door checks to make sure they're working properly. The district says it's still looking for at other safety measures, including bulletproof film for doors and windows. And KSAT hosted a town hall event to help answer a lot of questions that so many parents, students and staff members, a lot of the questions that they have going into this new school year. And while many parents keep in contact with their child's teacher, another great resource is the school counselor. So Dr. Melanie Morgan is a counselor at Southside ISD and she tells us about the benefits of parents creating a connection in order to help their child succeed even past the classroom walls. And then we're able to meet with them, you know, have them come in and meet with us. We can teach them the same coping strategies or skills that we're teaching to their kids, teach them so that they can do the same things with their children at home as well. If you'd like to hear more about creating these connections as well as hear about other topics like different schools around the Alamo City that are keeping students safe, you can watch our town hall live stream right now on KSAT.com. And a perfect way to celebrate the end of the first week of school for some, it is World Youth Day. The day was created by the United Nations 22 years ago in addition to celebrating the world's youth. It aims to raise awareness of the challenges that the younger generations face. Time now, just about 9.09, 83 degrees. You're going to be celebrating World Youth Day outside. Oh my gosh, do it now. There you, know, there you go, 83 degrees at 9.08. It's going to be another scorcher and the triple digits, unfortunately. There's no end in sight at this time. Sarah Spivey, we'll have our forecast when we come back. Well, Amazon is trying to crack down on workers who don't go into the office enough. So some U.S. based employees recently received an email warning them that their in person attendance is being tracked. The company's return to office policy requires workers to report to an office at least three days a week. The message highlights Amazon's determination to enforce its rules amid an employee backlash to the policy. And Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and fiance Lauren Sanchez are pledging to help Maui recover. In an Instagram post, Sanchez says she and Bezos are giving $100 million to recovery efforts in Maui, adding that they, quote, are heartbroken by what's happening in Maui. Other billionaires like Oprah Winfrey have also pledged to help the area. It's truly devastating oh, um, yeah. as we see the death toll rise out in Maui. Mm -hmm. But Sarah, that fire came in quick and fast because of those severe wind conditions and we're yeah. our wind conditions are they as bad as they have been in the last couple of days are they starting to slow down so we are going to have gusty winds today from the south at about 20 miles per hour mm. but the ones in maui were 80 plus right. miles per hour but it does highlight the fact that you know we, we do have high fire danger here across south central texas just for different reasons we're in drought and it is very hot take a look at temperatures this august so far every single day we've had a high above 100. in fact today we'll make our 47th 100 degree day in San Antonio for the year. We're running about five and a half degrees above average for the month already. We have also had eight record highs in a row. So every single day back to the 4th of August has either tied or beaten a record for the high. And today we probably will do it again for the ninth day in a row, tying or breaking a record. Uh, we're forecasting 105 in San Antonio for the high today. That'll be a record set back in 1969 of 104. It'll be hard for us to tie or beat the record tomorrow. It's not out of the realm of possibility. The record for the day tomorrow is 106. But in the coming days, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to be close to, if not beating a record, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. This heat is not going 
going anywhere anytime soon. I'm sorry to say for the next seven days at least we're going to be above 100 degrees. And so you know the drill by now. In fact, red flag warning, high fire danger in effect for all of the counties you see here in pink. But even our coastal communities should still use caution because fire danger can still be high closer to the coast as well. So let's do our part to avoid creating and spreading grass fires. Outside right now, seeing some clouds out there this morning. It's 84 degrees, but it already feels like it's 93 because humidity is high. The humidity will be falling, however, in the afternoon and winds are breezy from the south southeast at 15 miles per hour. Right now it's 79 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Kerrville, where it's 79 degrees. 86 in Pleasanton, 85 in Del Rio, 86 in Catula, 85 in New Braunfels, and 86 in Gonzales. Locally around the San Antonio metro area, not too bad in the higher elevations, 79 in Bandera and in Bernie. But as we go throughout the day, temperatures are quickly going to rise. We're going to be at 86 by 10, 94 around noon, mostly sunny to completely sunny skies this afternoon in spite of the cloudy start by three we're going to be well into the triple digits and at 5 p.m that's the peak heat of the day 5 6 p.m 105 degrees even after sunset close to 8 20 it's still going to be 94 at 9 uh, 9 p.m tonight looking at local highs in your neighborhoods 109 in del rio 107 in pleasanton 108 in Catula, 102 in kerrville and 104 in canyon lake hey here's some good news okay tonight the perseid meteor shower is going to be peaking look northeast after midnight in the pre-dawn hours tomorrow morning if you choose uh, but the cloud cover will be the least shortly after midnight it's best to find dark viewing spot away from bright lights you may see up to 90 meteors an hour if you're in a good spot Otherwise, we're not in a good spot when it comes to temperatures near 105 every single day of the next several days. Fire danger will continue and there's a small chance for a shower or storm on Tuesday afternoon, but the best we can do is only 20% Max and Sarah. I'll talk a little bit more about that small chance for rain in the forecast in the next half hour. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sarah. All right, let's check back in on the south side, Alamo College District and Palo Alto College unveiling the new Southside Education and Training Center. That's right, the nearly 49,000 square foot facility will serve as home for Palo Alto's college's new nursing program, the Ready to Work Initiative, and more. In May of 2017, Nelbert County voters approved a $450 million capital improvement bond for the Alamo Colleges with $23 million allocated for this new center built on land provided by Southside Independent School District. It's also part of the Alamo College's education and training centers designed to increase access to higher education services for underserved residents in part of Bear County. I was actually just at Southside ISD mm -hmm. and we're gonna do their back to school coverage Monday morning, but they're super excited about this and all the opportunities it brings to so many people in our area. It's amazing. It really is. Time now, 917, 84 degrees. Okay, this weekend marks 50 years of hip hop. We'll take a look at how some cities are celebrating. All right, speaking of celebrations, you can shake it off this weekend. Another pre-recording from Taylor Swift. We're gonna see what she had to say about revisiting her album, 1989. Taylor Swift announced she would be re-releasing her first Grammy winning album 1989 Taylor's version. On stage, Swift unveiled the cover art and release date for October 27th on the big screen from one of her era's concerts and the reaction from the crowd was huge. At one point they cheered and applauded for a full eight minutes. Do they have the energy in that three and a half hour concert on Instagram. She called 1989 Taylor's version the most her most favorite re record ever. All right. So speaking of music in New York, hip hop fans celebrating the genre's 50th anniversary, a block party. Iconic artists such as Chuck D, Flavor Flav performing some of the top hits to hundreds of fans, some who traveled across the country to be part of this momentous event. Universal Museum of Hip Hop expected to open just next year. Very cool. Very cool. All right, time now, 922, four degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we've been checking in at the new Southside Learning Center. 
So the nearly 49,000 square foot facility will serve as a home for Palo Alto's college's new nursing program, the Ready to Work initiative and more. You're actually looking at a live shot right now of what's happening there from our photojournalist Santiago. In May of 2017, Bear County voters approved a 450 million capital improvement bond for the Alamo colleges with $23 million allocated for this new center that's built on land provided by Southside Independent School District. It's also part of the Alamo College's education and training centers designed to increase access to higher education for residents in underserved parts of Bear County. All right, time now, 926, 84 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 929 this Saturday. It is August 12th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Good morning. So we've been talking about the heat so much, but a lot of excitement happening right now. Alamo College's district, Palo Alto College, they're unveiling the new Southside Education and Training Center. And here's the best part. It is happening indoors. Very cool. Let's take a look. The programs that we'll have here at the Southside Education and Training Center include a brand new nursing program through uh, Palo Alto. We'll also, we're in this beautiful manufacturing lab, we'll have manufacturing, entry level manufacturing. We'll have allied health programs such as certified nurse assistant, medical assistant as well, and we'll have adult education. In addition, the building will feature a testing assessment center, computer lab skills, and skills and simulation labs, a workforce training lab, and space for large gathering. And also the students from Southside ISD will benefit from this building and be able to use it. Absolutely. So the cool part really is we talk about the teaching shortages a lot, but there's also a huge demand for nurses. So there's a big nursing shortage and anticipate a gap over 20%, maybe 30% by 2030. So that means there's a need for about 60,000 nurses and across the state, across the country. Now, this center, it's part of that $450 million bond package that voters here in San Antonio, they approved back in 27. So this is really all the fruits of the labor. So excited for not only the nursing and medical community, but also the Southside community to have that right there on campus. Love uh, seeing all of that development go into the Southside where they need it. Oh yeah, population is booming and San Antonio, I mean, another thing booming is the temperature, Sarah. Yeah, Spotty. there's a lot of people who have moved to San Antonio. This is their first summer Ooh. in San Antonio. <laughs> welcome. welcome. Here's a South Central Texas welcome for you. How about today being the 13th 105 degree day of the year, today being the 47th 100 degree day of the year starting off right now. Not too bad though. 84 degrees in San Antonio. You can see that there's actually a, a deck of clouds that's going to be moving northeastward toward can uh, toward Medina Lake rather and into northwest Bear County. However, these clouds will quickly dissipate. We're going to be left with sunshine and hot temperatures this afternoon. We're going to be at 105 this afternoon. Try to get all of your yard work. Anything you need to do uh, outside before noon because because it'll be 94 to 105 in the afternoon. Southeast winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And uh, so fire danger will be high too. The only good news right now throughout the day today, other than the fact that, uh, you know, we have a small chance for rain in the week ahead on Tuesday is that molds are low at 80. Looking at this weekend though, 105 today, 104 tomorrow, high fire danger all weekend long. And yeah, I did mention that small chance for rain on Tuesday. We'll talk a little bit more in depth. If you're somebody who's a wishing person, hoping person, praying person, pray for Tuesday because it is going to be uh, hot regardless, but there's that small chance for rain. I'll have a look at that ahead at that coming up in just a bit. Max. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. So we know so many people out and about this weekend. Happy tax free weekend. There is an important construction to tell you about the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange shut down today. TxDOT says the east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 not open. Road work happening through the weekend. It's going to last until 5 a.m. Monday morning. We know it's not going to stop people from driving, so we do have alternative routes to tell you about. Just head over to KSAT.com. 
Happening today, the San Antonio Food Bank is partnering up with the Health and Human Services Community Partner Program to host a community event to help people with their Medicaid renewal. So staff will be available to answer any questions related to the federal continuous Medicaid coverage. There will also be other services available like food, vendors, and back to school resources for kids. If they need to apply for benefits, they can bring in their ID, proof of residence, um, proof of income if they have any, um, and social security numbers. Other than that, they don't need to bring anything with them. The meals will be for the children to eat here today or to take with them, but we will have 500 produce bags to give out to every household that comes in as well. This is a great opportunity for those getting ready to go back to school. There will be free haircuts for kids as well as several resources and vendors. And happening now, if you have a chance to give a furry friend a forever home, you can do so for free. Look at those faces. Don't you want to take one home? So it's happening at Principal Auto Group of Bernie now until 11 a.m. The first 25 adoptions will be completely free. There are no hidden fees. There you will find cats and dogs looking for new homes. Reminder, all of these pets that are adopted from SAPA come, they're vaccinated, they're microchip spayed and neutered. And San Antonio Pets Alive also asking for donations. They're in urgent need of dog toys, including Kong. You know what? You're a dog owner. You're a two-time dog owner. Yeah, they need Kongs. They need disposable gloves, dog kennels, paint scrapers, laundry detergent, and small Ziploc bags. You can drop it, any of this stuff off at their medical clinic in, on Marbach Road or take it to the adoption event that's happening right now. All right, also right now on KSAT.com, San Antonio City Council members, they're going to have their final say on the city's $3.7 billion budget proposal in mid-September. That includes money to add police officers, increase animal care services budget, and a rate hike for trash collection. So city staff hosting several budget town hall meetings starting Monday. We have a full list of dates, a breakdown of the proposal, and of course, the city manager, Eric Walsh, joining us on Leading SA tomorrow. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, for the city manager, just head to KSAT.com. Happening today, it is the beginning of tax-free weekend. We've been talking about it for the last week or so. Shoppers can save on so many school supplies and a lot of clothes, shoes, and backpacks under $100. There are some exceptions you need to know about. Jewelry, purses, they do not qualify as tax-free items. We have a link with the full list, all the eligible items right now. Just head to our homepage. And... Not happening now, but happening soon, two weeks from now, San Antonio schools going head to head. Friday, August 25th, we got a, the first night of KSAP Pigskin Classic, and then we have a triple header on Saturday, August 26th. There's a lot going on, schedules, teams, a lot of fun events. Scan the QR code on the screen right now. You can check out all the lineups and you can buy your tickets. Very exciting for Pigskin Classic. For KSAP Pigskin Classic, you can also help the San Antonio Food Bank at this year's KSAP Pigskin Classic. Our KSAP community team will collect donations at the Alamo Dome during all four games that's happening at the end of August. So we have a list of the food bank's 12 most wanted items and a link to make a one-time donation right now. Just head to our website, KSAT.com. It really is so cool. The boxes look awesome. Yeah. The field is going to be amazing. And the games last year, you said it best, under the brightest lights, all the teams stepped up and stepped out last year. And it's year. a big deal for these high school teams to play at the Alamo Dome, mm -hmm. especially so early in the season. Usually the only opportunity they have if they make playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, in their final rounds of playoffs. So it's just cool. So even if like you don't have a special team that you're cheering for, you don't have you're totally out of the high school football realm. Oh, it's yeah. just a fun atmosphere and a community. I don't know. Just feel, you feel you it's really, a community event. Yeah, you it's, just feel like really together. close and connected to your community. It's true. All right, time now. 9:37, 84 degrees. Okay. Today on Texas Max, what's going on? Oh, here? we got surf and turf burritos. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is the breakfast of champions. All of it. Mm, no, know. no, you're not feeling it? I don't know. Maybe I'm not hungry enough. Okay. All right, the James Webb, Webb Space Telescope has given scientists more information about the most distant star ever detected. We'll tell you about that in just a bit. Back here on Earth, take a live look. All right, the clouds moving away, the blue skies coming out, and the temperature is going up. We are going to check in with Sarah Spivey what you can expect today, tomorrow. Possibilities of rain? 
<laughs> now to emergency responders at the Grand Canyon rushing to rescue a teenager who fell over the edge at a popular hiking point. ABC's Faith Abube tells us what park rangers are saying. This morning, a 13-year-old boy's remarkable survival after he tumbled at least 70 feet from the edge of a Grand Canyon cliff. It all happened after bystanders say he lost his balance, falling from the high distance. Witnesses described seeing him slip from uh, an elevated point. Uh, out at the end of our Bright Angel Point trail. Rescue crews using ropes and a Stokes basket to pull up the severely injured teenager after high winds made a helicopter rescue impossible. He was at risk of falling further into the canyon. The unidentified teenager still conscious as he was rushed to a pediatric trauma center. That he was in such a good a condition as he was given the distance he fell. It's not uncommon for people to fall an equivalent distance and be either unconscious and unable to respond or deceased. Overnight, officials urging visitors to not stray from designated trails and walkways. The National Park Service warns that the North Rim's narrow paved path provides spectacular views, but drops off dramatically on both sides in some places, and certain sections are surprisingly steep. Since 2013, a supervisory park ranger tells us there have been a total of 76 over-the-edge incidents at the park, including the deadly 200-foot accidental fall of a 44 year old man in the same area a year ago this month. Just remember it only takes one moment of inattentiveness or one slip to potentially fall up to several hundreds of feet. And that was ABC's Faith Abube reporting. So visiting the Grand Canyon could become more dangerous in the future. A new study found extreme heat will significantly increase the risk of heat related illnesses for the millions of people who visit that national park across the country and at national parks, especially like Big Bend here, suspected heat deaths are on the rise. The James Webb Telescope, Space Telescope, has given scientists more information about the most distant star ever detected. This star is about 28 billion light years away, a million times brighter than the sun and twice as hot. The light the telescope saw from the star was emitted within the first billion years of the universe's existence. The only reason the star is visible at all is because a massive galaxy cluster between us and another galaxy magnified its light through its gravitational lensing. The telescope also detected colors that suggest the other galaxy has a cool red companion star, just as most other B-type stars have. That takes me back to my astronomy classes. Fun fact, meteorologists don't really study meteors in school. Oh, but you did take an astronomy class? Was that a I requirement? Did. No, I chose to. That sounds like a fun class. It was so much fun. And it was at Texas A&M, which has mm. a phenomenal astronomy program. More fun to talk about stars Although, than it is this triple digit. Yeah, yeah, our star has given us some heat, isn't it? Uh, temperatures are well above 100 degrees today throughout the forecast. Take a look at the weather setup. You can see that rain is going up and over the state of Texas through Oklahoma. Some severe weather in parts of Tennessee and Kentucky early this morning, but this heat high right over us, that heat high compressing the air, pushing down on the air, increasing the heat, and forecast temperatures expected to be 105 here in San Antonio, a degree hotter in Phoenix, Arizona, 106 in Dallas, Fort Worth, 106 in San Angelo. You can very clearly see where that heat high is when you're just looking at the forecast high temperatures for the day across the nation. And this will make 47, 47 100 degree days here in San Antonio uh, for the year so far. We're 10 days away from third place 2011 and 13 days away from taking the cake for the most 100 degree days in a year. It'll be hard for us to get there to 13, but it is possible, so we'll keep you posted. Another thing to keep in mind is that the fire danger is very high today, not only around San Antonio, but across the state of Texas, especially up that I-35 corridor toward Dallas Fort Worth. But locally, very high fire danger for Del Rio, very high fire danger for Pearsall and Frio County, very high fire danger for Gonzalez and up in the Hill Country, especially north of 1604, Bernie, Bulverde, Sisterdale, Comfort, Canyon Lake starts 
uh, and Spring Branch area. All of these areas have very high fire risk, but we should all be careful today to not create or spread grass fires. 84 degrees outside. It's breezy. Winds are from the southeast at about 15 miles per hour. Already feels like 93. And when we look at temperatures, you know, we're already off to a warm start. 82 in Bernie, 82 in Bandera. Good morning in Hondo. It's 84 degrees, 85 in New Braunfels. This is a look at the case at 12 hour forecast, though. Even though we're starting off with clouds by noon, we're going to be mostly sunny and 94. We'll be at 100 degrees by 2 o'clock and then in the afternoon 105 for the high temperature today, likely going to be beating a record set back in 1969 and even this evening still 94 at 9 p.m. Looking at neighborhood highs, 108 in Creases Springs in Catula, 109 in Del Rio today, 104 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville. We're going to be running some 5 to 10 degrees above the average, 107 Stinson area, 105 in Seguin, and 105 in Hondo. All right, let's talk about the very slim chance for rain on Tuesday, only 20%. So I don't want everybody to get their hopes up for Tuesday. That's a very small chance, uh, but that heat high is still going to be the dominant weather pattern over the next seven to 10 days. This triple digit weather is not going anywhere anytime soon. 104 tomorrow, not only for us, but across the state of Texas on Monday, 104 in San Antonio. Notice that that heat high does move off a little to the east on Monday, but it's still going to be 104. Then by Tuesday, there is a possibility that a few storms in North Texas could try to make a run for San Antonio. It's still going to be hot. And again, our chance for rain is only 20%. So do not get your hopes up. That's the only thing we could talk about positively in the forecast right now, though, because as you can see, it's going to be well over 100, closer to 105 every single day in the next several days. Uh, and beyond. So it's a lot of people are asking me, Sarah, when will this triple digit weather end? It is hard to see an end in sight right now. We will eventually end by the time we get to fall, <laughs> but it is it's hard to give you any positive news right now. Unfortunately, Sarah. Ooh, OK, yeah, the end of the sprint, maybe, maybe like a month long sprint. Yeah, it's okay. been hot every single day. We've been above 100 for the month of August. We can do it. We're, we're, we're South Texans, we're strong. Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> All right, it's 948 and 85 degrees. Take a look outside with TransGuide. As you can see, things are flowing smoothly, but just keep in mind that it is a uh, tax-free weekend. So a lot of people are gonna be out on the roads and it's gonna be hot as you're traveling from your car to that store. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, two, eight, fireball zero, daily four, eight, one, nine, six, fireball zero, cash five, 10, 19, 26, 31, 32, and Mega Millions was last night. Fortunately, not the 1.5 billion jackpot. <laughs> 8, 9, 18, 35, 41. Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. All righty, welcome back. Let's check back in on the south side alamo colleges district and palo alto college are unveiling the new south side education and training center yeah this is actually really cool it's on martina lasoya road and it's going to house palo alto's college's nursing program the facility will also house alamo college districts ready to work adult education literacy and workforce training program so this is very cool um, that ribbon cutting happening now. This is a live look from our photojournalist Santiago who is out there. And this is a, the center is part of a $450 million package bond that was approved by voters back in 2017 for the Alamo College District. And this is because there is a huge nursing shortage. So they're hoping that by 2030, that means there's gonna be a bigger push and need for those nurses or those nurses will be available in the state of Texas. This is awesome. You know, Alamo colleges are so great. And I, I say that from experience. I actually went to Northwest Vista for a year. Beautiful campus. Really gorgeous campus. And it's great to see that that's happening for folks there on the south side. Mm, love that they're beautifying the south side Absolutely. campus as well. Okay. We have another double header this weekend on Leading SA. Two leaders of our community are joining us live tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. We are set to be joined by the city manager, Eric Walsh. We're going to discuss the processes and procedures of the city budget, a really hot topic in San Antonio right now, the council. Then at 8.30, the superintendent of Southside ISD joining us live to talk about the start of this new school year, along with concerns from parents and teachers. He'll be addressing this, addressing those concerns live. So if you have any questions you would like to ask either of them, 
You can submit them right now. Just head to our leading essay section of ksat.com. Join us tomorrow at 8 and 8.30 a.m. I'm looking forward to that, definitely. All right, time now is 9.54, and it is a balmy 85 degrees. All right, here's a preview on Texas Eats. It has exploded with popularity, especially the surf and turf burrito. Talk to me about what's inside. It has a carne asada, it's a USA choice beef, and then we have these jumbo large shrimp in here, guacamole, pico, our famous house sauce, and a lot of cheese and french fries. My goodness, you loaded this thing up. We did, we don't play. Now you have a lot of different sauces on the menu as well, including a hot sauce. Pour a little bit onto this one here. All right. Don't hurt me now. I won't, man. It does not wreck your palate. Cheers to you, the surf and turf with the house-made spicy sauce. Here we go. That's right. Oh, that's spicy. Man. That's spicy. Good, Give me some love. Man. Just a reminder, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange, it's completely shut down today. So TxDOT says the east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 will not be open. So we have some alternate routes posted for you over on KSAT.com. And another reminder happening today, you have a chance to give a furry friend a home forever for free. Uh, you can, it's happening at Principal Audio Auto Group of Bernie for the next hour. The first 25 adoptions will be completely free, no fees. In San Antonio Pets Alive, they're also asking for donations. You can drop off these items at their medical clinic on Marbach Road, or it will take, you can take it by that adoption event that's happening today. All this information, is also on their social pages. Here's some good news. Pollen count is low today, only at 80. Honestly, the lowest pollen count I've seen in a long time, probably because it's been so hot. Take a look at clouds and temperatures. There's some cloud cover out near Uvalde and Hondo right now, starting to try to move over to San Antonio, but a lot of these clouds will dissipate before it can even make it to us. So we're already at 87. You know it's going to be a hot day when you start at 10 o'clock at 87 degrees. It feels a lot hotter than that. Already feels like it's in the mid 90s. 105 for the high temperature today. In the afternoon, humidity is going to come down, high fire danger throughout the day today and tomorrow, 104 for the high tomorrow. And then look at this forecast or don't look at it if mm -hmm. you really don't want bad news. Temperatures are going to be near 105 every single day, only the slimmest chance for an isolated thunder shower in the afternoon on Tuesday. Okay. Also a reminder today is, or this weekend is tax free weekend right. for back to school item shopping. So if you're going to be out and about, please stay safe, you know, in the parking yep. lots or outside for any of that. Have a good Saturday. We'll see y'all tomorrow. We begin tonight with the latest coming out of Hawaii. The wildfires there now turning into the deadliest natural disaster in that state's history. Yeah, it's devastating. At least 80 people have died in the fires and many others are now homeless. As firefighters continue to battle that ongoing fire, FEMA is on the island assessing the extent of the damage. Melissa Adon reports from Maui. Residents of the historic town of Lahaina finally allowed to return home days after the devastating fires in Hawaii swept through communities, leaving behind a path of destruction. You just want to see what's left, but nothing. Nothing. All gone. In West Maui, a new wildfire broke out overnight, forcing residents in Kaanapali to evacuate. Hawaii emergency management records show there were no warning sirens alerting people to evacuate. Instead, alerts went to cell phones, TVs, and radio stations, but power and cellular outages limited their reach. Kessa Stoddart and her family lost their home. No warning. We, we are supposed to get, you know, on your cell phone evacuation alerts. notices, alerts. We got nothing. The flames also tearing through this Kula neighborhood. A Connie Joseph's father spent decades building this multi-generational home. It's now completely gone. You know, there's things you think you'll always have. You know, like things you think you'll give to your children. The community coming together to help. Some taking to the water to bring in supplies to those stranded. Nurse practitioner Natalie Plotkin hoping she can help. We're going to go down tomorrow. We heard there's some people down there that have a lot of burn wounds. So we're going to go check it out. And the Cajun Navy, known for its work during disasters along the Gulf Coast, now in Maui. People think it's the fire or the flood or the tornado. 
It's really the crisis and the aftermath. And that's what we're here to do is to look after the people, really the elderly. FEMA is providing federal assistance, but keep in mind the lack of power, communication, internet is making it so difficult for families to reunite with loved ones that are missing. Melissa Adan, ABC News, Maui. Such a tough situation there. Mm -hmm. Back here at home, messages sent to the sky today. Dozens of people releasing balloons in honor of 20 year old Zachary Kali Moreno. Zach was one of the two New Braunfels residents who died in a plane crash in Wisconsin just a few weeks ago. Our Avery Everett was there today talking to family and Avery, we know they said he was one of a kind. Yeah, family remembers Zach is always having the dream to fly. The most of those messages family and friends wrote today, just weeks after his death, say they're hoping he's now flying high. Dozens of family members met this afternoon to share stories and photos of Zach. We first told you about Zach's story a few weeks ago. He died after a plane crash that he was riding in, crashed into a Wisconsin lake near Oshkosh. Family say they hope they sent one final message to Zach with this balloon release today. And tonight on the Night Beat, we're taking a deeper look into Zach's life. And right now on KSAT.com, we have details of a scholarship fund the Commemorative Air Force in San Marcos have set up in Zach's name. For now, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Avery. And we will get that sound to you on her story at 10 o'clock, so make sure to be tuned for that. San Antonio police are investigating a multi-vehicle crash that left a child critically injured. The crash happened just before 11 this morning near Bassey Road and Buckeye Avenue. Police say the truck ran the stop sign, hitting an SUV, causing it to spin out and hit another passing vehicle. The child had a very serious cut from the seatbelt and was taken to the hospital. SAPD says right now no charges have been filed. The San Antonio Fire Department's arson unit investigating after a warehouse on the Grace Lutheran Church property catches fire overnight. Fire crews say they responded to this fire about 2 o'clock this morning. SAFD says they received reports of a car driving by and throwing a bottle that was on fire and then it hit the building. Crews were able to contain that fire. At this time, it's unknown how much damage was caused inside the warehouse. One person is dead, several others missing after an apparent house explosion in western Pennsylvania this morning. It happened this morning at 10 o'clock in the city of Plum. One house appeared to explode, which caused two others to catch fire. The three homes were destroyed and at least a dozen more were damaged. One person died in the explosion and many people had to be rescued from underneath debris. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused that explosion. Well, time is running out on summer as many kids will be headed back to the classroom this upcoming week. Alamo Heights, East Central, Harlandale, Lackland, Northeast, Southside ISD and Uvalde CISD all starting on Monday. SAISD, Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD beginning Tuesday, then Floorsville, Judson and Randolph are all going to be starting on Wednesday. And just to get ready for that, KSAT hosting a town hall to help answer questions many parents, students, and school staff may have going into that new school year. Yeah, it was a great town hall. While many parents keep in contact with their children's teacher, another great resource is the school counselor. Dr. Melanie Morgan, a counselor at Southside ISD, goes over the benefits of parents creating that connection to help their child succeed even beyond the classroom walls. And then we're able to meet with them, you know, have them come in and meet with us. We can teach them the same coping strategies or skills that we're teaching to their kids, teach them so that they can do the same things with their children at home as well. If you'd like to hear more about creating these connections or how different schools around the Alamo City are keeping students safe this year, you can watch our town hall live stream right now on KSAT.com. Coming up on the news at five, the city announcing an extension to their summer pool season. How many will remain open and when they'll close for the season. As summer wraps up, tax free weekend is happening right now. Many of you may be taking advantage of it to get those kids ready for back to school for every $100 you spend this weekend. You can save about $8 on qualifying items. Some of those items include clothing, shoes, backpacks, school supplies. For a list of all those items, just head over to our website, ksat.com.
And if you're heading out for tax free weekend, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange will be shut down tonight. TxDOT says the east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 will not be open. Road work will last through Monday morning at 5 a.m. We do have some alternate routes posted for you. Just head over to KSAT.com. Maybe the end of summer, but it certainly doesn't feel like it. So that means San Antonio Parks and Recreation is extending the pool season for another month. Nine pools will remain open on the weekends until September 24th. Two of the nine pools will also be open on weekdays. Parks and Rec says this will help families stay cool as the heat wave continues. For a list of all the pools that will remain open, head over to KSAT.com and stay cool. <laughs> All right, in less than two weeks, local high school football teams will be going head to head for the KSAT Pigskin Classic. That's Friday, August 25th, followed by a triple header on Saturday, August 26th. Scan the QR code on your screen to check out the lineup and buy your tickets and those VIPs get to come hang out with us. And you can also help the San Antonio Food Bank at this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic. Our KSAT community team will be collecting donations at the Alamo Dome during all four games later this month. We have a list of the food bank's 12 most wanted items and a link to make a one-time donation right now at ksat.com. Almost time for pigskin classic. It's time to go. Yeah. Football excited. season. Excited for football. Yes. Doesn't all of the like things that. and hopefully a couple cold fronts <laughs> yes. at some point. Let's but not yes. Get crazy now. <laughs> Until then, we are just dealing with this. Very copy and paste from what we've seen over the past several days. Once again, hitting the triple digit mark, climbing to about 104. That's the preliminary high so far for this Saturday. And you guessed it, more record challenging heat is still with us all the way through next week as well. We've got to keep on pushing through. Elevated fire danger conditions continue as well, but there is a small chance for an isolated shower early next week. We're going to get you those details after the break. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> I'm thinking I got nothing. I got, you know, so I was thinking the other day, like, all the things that I would like to be doing. Yeah. And I was getting into like a real negative Nancy and then you're like, brain too hot to thing. Do that. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, I want to go to the park with my daughter, but it's too hot to do that. I want to take a walk. But even just like some household chores. Like I yes. really need to clean out Making my garage, but I'm yeah. telling you what, every time I get in there, I'm just like, yeah. nope. It's like we'll, an oven. In we'll try this again. <laughs> it's an oven. In a few Let's months. Revisit this in October. In so I'm, what I'm saying is let's not try to dwell in that negative space because it hasn't been good. It's and not a good place have, to be. Yes, the heat is still going to continue yes. next week, but there is a small chance for a shower okay. on Tuesday. She's saying there's a chance. There folks. is a <laughs> chance. Most of Love us it. are still going to stay dry. we got to manage expectations a little bit, but at least it's something to talk about. That is for sure. Okay, so today, yes, another triple digit day here in San Antonio. Let's get you a look at some of those current conditions outside. 104 so far the preliminary high. We'll see if we climb a degree over the next hour or so, but this officially ties the existing record high for the day that was set back in the 1960s. So that also makes for our ninth consecutive day of record heat here in town. You can see all of us except for Canyon Lake in the triple digits 105 and Gonzales 107 in Pleasanton 101 out west in Uvalde. Now today also marks the 47th triple digit day that we've seen so far this year, and we are just going to keep tacking on to that number in the days ahead, all starting with our Sunday. So here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the back half of the weekend. I do think like what we saw earlier this morning as the humidity builds through the overnight. We will see some clouds return by the time the sun comes up tomorrow. It also is going to be a warm and muggy start with a forecast low around 80 here in town. But also like today, we're going to see plenty of sunshine return by lunchtime, a temperature around 94 at night noon 101 by 3 p.m. And then you can see by about four to five o'clock, we've got yet another forecast high pointed at about 104 degrees here in town as well. 105 in Floresville stretching over to Nixon, 104 in Seguin, 103 in Canyon Lake, 104 in Utopia down to Sabinal as well. Now, if that 104 verifies tomorrow, we should sit just shy of the existing record of 106 also set back in the 1960s but still record challenging heat quickly returns Monday.
Tuesday. In fact, by the middle to later portions of next week, high pressure strengthens yet again. So that afternoon high actually could build by a degree or two. So that's something we'll continue to watch as well. And speaking of that high pressure system, you can see where it's anchored here this Saturday evening. All of that rain and storm making energy along the western, northern and eastern periphery of that big blue H, even an area of low pressure moving across the New England state, sparking some more severe weather. Of course, nothing like that expected for us here in South Central Texas. But watch what happens here in the upper levels, especially by early next week. The center of that high pressure system is actually going to wobble around just a little bit more, and it's actually going to move ever so slightly west, centering itself over the Four Corners region Monday night and into Tuesday. And if we can find that, that might leave just enough space for a weak boundary to push through the Lone Star State. As of right now, it's looking like we could see a stray shower to a storm pop up specifically on that Tuesday time frame. It is not going to be for everybody. Coverage is expected to be pretty low, but it's something we will continue to monitor in the days ahead. But until then, because it has been so incredibly dry over the past several weeks, of course, fire danger has been something that we've been needing to talk about and having to contend with as well. Elevated fire danger conditions will continue into Sunday across the region. So just something to keep in mind there too. Two. Of course, here's some more fire safety tips to keep in the back of your mind. No campfires or burn piles. Avoid using those tools that create sparks. Dispose cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains behind your vehicle. And speaking of vehicles, don't park recently driven cars or trucks on that dry grass and vegetation because that could easily start a fire. So just something that we'll need to remember into the back half of the weekend. But of course, right now, until then, 104 degrees. We will see those temperatures fall into the mid 90s by 9 p.m. And also like what we've seen over the past several evenings, as those temperatures drop, winds have been picking up. So it will be breezy for any of those Saturday night plans. We'll copy and paste that into your Sunday and really even more triple digits through next week. But that 20% chance for a shower on Tuesday, definitely something that we are looking forward to for a select few folks. Tim's just groaning over here. I think I you guys could hear yeah, that. It was a grunt of disapproval. <laughs> a big blue H while it's doing its wobble out in the four corners. It could just <laughs> wobble itself off the map for all of us. and That'd be nice. That would. not All right. We don't Thanks, have that Mia. Power. Thanks, Mia. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about the Hall of Fame. They're going to need their own wing for the Spurs here pretty soon. Yeah, hey guys, we're coming to you at Symphony Hall. Check it out, the red carpet's right behind me. These uh, Hall of Famers are going to be coming in here oh, in about the next 45 minutes or so, and Tony Parker is expected to be among them. Coming up, Tony Parker going into the Hall of Fame tonight, and he says it would not be possible without head coach Greg Popovich. And in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys are playing their preseason opener right now. Coming up. She's not even here. She has a game. I know oh, that, I'm Lisa. Sorry. Don't take sorry. away my joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> she would love to be here, uh, but she's got a game tonight. Yeah, don't take away Pop's jokes. Becky is here now to take her place in the Hall of Fame in Big Board Sports. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome live to Symphony Hall here in Springfield, Massachusetts, where several basketball greats will be enshrined in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame tonight. This is a stellar class, and of course, we are here for Pop, Tony, and Becky. Now, last night was a tip-off celebration and awards gala held at the Mohegan Sun Ballroom. Spurs great Tony Parker got his Hall of Fame jacket and his Hall of Fame ring. His brothers TJ and Pierre, along with his former teammates Boris Diaw and Roni Turioff, are there to present Tony with his new attire. That jacket looks good on him, doesn't it? Parker helped the Spurs win four NBA championships and says it all started with his head coach. It just started with Pop, you know, Pop was uh, was the leader and uh, yeah, he was very, very uh, tough 
but at the end of the day, uh, uh, we took his coaching. You know, uh, I don't know if today, you know, when I look at my brother coaching in France, you know, uh, the the new generation sometimes a little bit different. You know, but but back then, Coach Pop, I, I'm not going to use the language that he was using, the way he was talking to me. You know, but but uh, he doesn't do it anymore now. But <laughs> back then, back then. Uh, we were the, the way he was coaching and, and how hard he was coaching. Uh, we wanted to win, and year after year, we were never satisfied. We wanted to keep winning, and, and uh, it's a little bit like once you touch it, you know, and you win a championship, you want to you want to do it again. Pop's granddaughter Bridget presented him with his Hall of Fame jacket and class ring. What an amazing moment for both. Pop going in with Tony is pretty cool. Now, Pop didn't want 19-year-old Tony Parker based on his first workout with the Spurs years ago. Pop gave him another shot. Tony proved Pop wrong. And now they're going into the Hall of Fame together. He was a great student, uh, very competitive. And what I liked the most is if, if I was on him too much, he would let me know, and I was on him a lot. Uh, but he, he communicated, and he's highly intelligent. And he'd say some things sometimes when I knew I was unfair, and it would bring me back to where I needed to be as a coach. So he's very special to me. Becky Hammond wasn't here last night because her Las Vegas Aces had a game. They beat the Mystics 113-89, and then she hopped on a jet flying from Nevada to Connecticut. During post, Kelsey Plum and Asia Wilson had fun with the Hall of Famer. I thought Becky coached pretty well tonight. Yeah, <laughs> it was decent. It seemed as if she had other things in her mind. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it's it okay. It, it, it was okay. glad that I'm glad that she was here physically, mentally, emotionally. I don't know if she was there, but yeah. we picked up her slack. Great. So. I guess she can have a good weekend. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have a very good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Becky and all the Hall of Famers are going to have a very good weekend. We will have your uh, enshrinement reaction tonight on the Night Beat. For now, let's send it back to San Antonio where Mary Rominger has more sports. Mary? Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Thank you, Larry. Football is in the air here in Texas. Six NFL preseason games on the slate today. One going on right now in Arlington between Cowboys and Jaguars. Both teams are coming off divisional round appearances from last year's playoffs. We talked about it yesterday. The competition for the number two running back behind Tony Pollard is wide open. Let's go to a live scoring update. It's 14-0. Jags are up. Running back Link Davis leading the Cowboys in rush attempts and targets. We'll have the highlights tonight on the Night Beats. The Texans led off week one of the preseason, scoring three touchdowns in a win over New England. One of the big storylines from that game was rookie wideout Tank Dells. Dells finished with five catches and uh, four 65 yards and a touchdown. You're looking at the TD. Splendid recovery. He eventually hauls in the pass from David Davis Mills. Now he has everyone's attention. He's electric and he's always open. He's been open in training camp a lot. Right? He's he's precise with his route running. Uh, he was it was fun to see him in the in the run game. Right, his intent when he was going to block right safeties or corners. Right, his intent it was it was really fun to see Tank just to see him in that moment and to see the moment not be too big for him. Next chance to see Dells and the rest of the squad is in a week at home against the Dolphins. San Antonio FC and its relentless attack will square off against New Mexico United tonight at 8 p.m. SAFC enters the match in second place in the USL Championship Western Conference. The club has given up the first goal in four consecutive matches, but has battled back to win three of the four. That's a credit to the team's balanced attack, who leads the league with 44 goals. I feel like we have to keep the momentum going. You know, we, we've ended on a very high this past game from you know, winning at the last minute, and I just feel like we keep going with the momentum. You know, Tyler Monsters, well, at the end of the day, we should get the results. We'll have an update on the match tonight in the night beat. That Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony gets underway at 6 o'clock, guys, so it's almost here. Very exciting. And then this, and then San Antonio FC second place are so close. So close. They're just a couple of points behind yeah. first place. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mary. I look forward to more Popovich jokes, hopefully <laughs> tonight. We'll be right back.
All right, looking ahead to tomorrow, it'll be a warm and muggy start near about 80 with some morning cloud cover and then plenty of sunshine takes back over into the afternoon. Another high around 104 more triple digits all the way through next week and that straight chance for a shower on Tuesday. Silver lining below to lower. We'll see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Messages sent to the sky today. Family and friends of Zachary Colley Moreno released balloons in his honor. Zach, one of the two new brothels passengers who died in a plane crash in Wisconsin just a few weeks ago. His grieving family tells the night team's Avery Everett the tragedy has brought dozens of people together. We want to send him a little message. There's no easy way to reach the sky. It's very hard. But family of Zachary Colley Moreno are hoping to send one final message. And we want to let him know that his legacy will go on and his passion will go on as much as we can possibly do that for him. A life lost doing something he loved. Zach was one of two people from New Braunfels that died in a Wisconsin plane crash just a few weeks ago. He was so young and uh, he had so much to give. A lover of history and traveling. Family and friends say Zach pursued everything he could with passion, and they hope to do the same with one final send off. I wrote to him, fly with the angels, Zach. And why'd you write that? Because he loved to be on, on planes. But this takeoff came with tears. It feels really proud that he was able to do that and reach out to so many people. His grandmother says she still can't say goodbye. We love him. But she's holding on knowing he's finally flying high. The commemorative Air Force in San Marcos has set up a scholarship fund in Zach's memory. Those details are on our website, ksat.com. For now, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. A woman fighting for her life at a hospital right now after she was shot several times at a gas station downtown. It happened at the Valero in the 900 block of West, West Hildebrand Avenue around 530 this afternoon. Officers say they found the woman shot in the head and chest when they arrived. She was rushed to a nearby hospital. Last check was in critical condition. We don't know much about the suspect. Police believe it was a man, but they don't know what led up to that shooting or how that guy took off. San Antonio police have arrested a man who they say set two homes on fire earlier this year. They say 38-year-old Alfred Malagon, Malagon set his neighbor's house on fire on April 8th. The same night, another home was also burned. An investigation revealed Malagon intentionally started both fires, SAPD saying he even admitted to the crimes. Losing a loved one to fentanyl, families right here in Bear County sharing their stories, which will soon be seen around the world in the form of a documentary. Today, the night team's Camilla Juarez was invited to watch one of those documentary interviews right here in San Antonio. One family told her it's helping their broken hearts heal. I need to tell people, how do I do this? The real life stories of real life people. Everyone needs to know. It, it needs to be told. A pill that was not what he thought it was. The one pill from a friend. These are all families who lost a loved one to fentanyl. They're called angel families. They're all sharing their stories for a new documentary, hoping it will save someone's life. Many are from our own South Texas community. Jake wanted to live. He, he had a future and that was stolen from him. Martha Johnson from Shirts lost her grandson Jake after he mistakenly took a fentanyl-laced pill. She says it feels cathartic to talk about him. They're sharing our stories and we're, people are listening. And, and to us as the ones that are left behind that are hurting, it helps us and, and we, um, we heal. What are, what are those shining things that you remember about it? Glenn Muse is the director for Texas Pictures Documentaries and let us sit in on some of the interviews. We can make eye contact with the subject and the subject makes eye contact with us. Showing us how he makes the families more comfortable by using a device that blocks the camera. It's impactful. The documentary is connecting angel families together you know, the guy that through the interview process. I'm like, oh my goodness. That sounds like my story. Mm -hmm. I could relate to that and it helps me. But also online. Muse says the project started with a few dozen interviews on YouTube. Each video has nearly 50,000 views. And they're finding this series and finding some comfort in seeing that they're not alone. 
Now, as you can see, the documentary is still in the works and won't be released for at least another year, but you can see interviews with Angel families right now on YouTube. We have a link to that on our website. Camilio Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Important to share those stories. And last month, we had a fighting fentanyl town hall discussion right here on KSAT 12. Yeah, we spoke to several people who have had personal battles with fentanyl and also some who have lost loved ones. The entire goal of the special, start a conversation with your kids and loved ones about the dangers of this deadly drug. You can watch that special right now on our website by just scanning the QR code you see on your screen. Helping folks on the east side meet their needs. That was the goal of the American Indians in Texas East Side Alive Resource Fair today. But it was more than just a resource fair. It was a celebration of east side culture. And with the help of some local nonprofits like the San Antonio Food Bank and Metro Health, families got some much needed help. Things like back to school supply giveaways and other items were raffled off. The students all across the Alamo City are headed back to the classroom this week. Alamo Heights, East Central, Harlandale, Lackland, Northeast, Southside ISD, and Uvalde CISD all start on Monday. SAISD, Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD begins Tuesday. And lastly, Floorsville, Judson, and Randolph Field ISD will begin on Wednesday. You can find a full list of school start dates on our website, ksat.com. And you still have another day to save a little extra cash before sending your students back to school. Tax-free weekend ends tomorrow. For every $100 you spend this weekend, you can save about $8 on qualifying items like clothing, shoes, backpacks, and school supplies. For the full list of items that are not under tax-free weekend exemptions, just head over to our website, ksat.com. And if you are planning on stepping out for any back to school shopping tomorrow, plan for it to be another hot one across South Central Texas. Temperature right now still 90 degrees. Of course, what we've seen the past several evenings, temperatures drop off pretty quickly, especially after sunset. That also helps the winds kick back up. So it also is a little breezy out there as well. OK, today broke yet another record. 105 was the official high temperature here in San Antonio, well above the average of 97. But you can see that did break the record of 104 that was set back in the 1960s. Also made for our ninth consecutive day of record heat here in town. And here's the thing about that heat. It is still not going anywhere. In fact, more triple digits will take us all the way through next week, as well as more opportunities to tie or break some more record highs. Elevated fire danger is also going to continue as well. So that's something that we'll need to keep in mind. But there is the potential to find maybe an isolated shower or two early next week. We're going to get you all those details coming up in just a few. Still ahead on the night beat, roaches and dirty conditions led to re-inspections at a San Antonio coffee shop and convenience store with a history of low scores. We go behind the kitchen door again to find out more. Plus, broken headstones were scattered throughout a San Antonio cemetery last week. Police and officials say there was no foul play, but a man that has a loved one buried there isn't buying it. And detailing disaster, wildfires have taken the lives of dozens of people out in Hawaii coming up. We go to Maui, where residents are just starting the long road to recovery. Those deadly wildfires responsible now for killing at least 89 people on the Hawaiian island of Maui, and officials only expecting those numbers to go up. Residents in some parts of the island just now coming back from evacuating. Many of them finding out, though, they are coming back to nothing. Tonight, ABC's Melissa Don in Maui with an update on that disaster. Those raging wildfires on Maui are now Hawaii's deadliest natural disaster in the state's history. On Tuesday, the flames, fueled by hurricane force winds, torched several areas on the island. Annalise Cochran described how she survived, spending more than seven hours in the water. I climbed over the seawall into the ocean, and while um, the fire was happening and the cars were exploding, uh, we would duck into the water and we would put our mouths as close to the surface as we could so that we could breathe. Residents of the historic town of Lahaina returning to find their homes reduced to piles of ash and rubble. Officials say more than 2,200 structures damaged or destroyed. More than 85 percent were residential. Hundreds and hundreds of cars are lined up along the road waiting for that opportunity to go back to their communities. It's been four days and they're awaiting a grim journey to see what's left of their homes. They will not let us get through. 
On Saturday, officials opened one route into West Maui for residents who must show proof of residence, but we saw many people turned away. The state attorney general has announced a comprehensive review of Maui's evacuation policies, including systems for notifying residents to get out during emergencies, notifications many here say they never received. There were no alarms, there were no warnings. The Alahino Luna blew up like in a matter of five to 10 minutes. If I didn't have my Jeep running with the AC on when the fireball went over my head, I wouldn't be here right now. Many expressing to me the frustration they have with officials and the response to the fires. If you didn't know how to get out of town or if you were stuck in that traffic, you were subject to whatever the whims of the fire were and there was nobody, nobody there to help you. New video from the Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources shows what happened to the town of Kula. You can see nothing but concrete columns columns left at this home. Melissa Don, ABC News, Maui. So devastating. Back here at home, the Alamo welcomed visitors from far and wide today to celebrate a very special birthday. Yes, that of Davy Crockett, the king of the wild frontier, was born on August 17th, 237 years ago. This year, the Alamo started celebrating a few days early. Crockett was a Tennessee congressman who played an important role in the Texas Revolution and died defending the Alamo. History lovers and families visited the Alamo to learn more about the last stand through living history exhibits and other demonstrations. I got to do uh, um, some shooting because now I'm officially a, a Alamo defender. Official Alamo <laughs> defender. We'll take them. If you couldn't make it out there today, don't worry. The Alamo will have a free admission next Thursday, August 17th, for Crockett's actual birthday anniversary. If they're still talking about you after 237 years, you must have done something right. Yeah, and get that little one a job. Seriously. If she's going to stand out there and be shooting in the heat, that is dedication. That it is absolutely. certainly Not dedication. <laughs> yeah, because we know that it has been another incredibly hot weekend across South Central Texas. Today, yes, we broke the record. Mm. Ninth consecutive day of record heat here in San Antonio. And it also made for our 47th triple digit day so far this year. Take a look at these stats here, the top five years for triple digit days. So we're just going to tack on to this number in the days ahead because we still have that heat high pressure in control. And yes, it is going to wobble around a little bit more in the coming days, still not completely going away, but especially by early next week, there is the potential that it moves far enough west that we could manage to squeeze in an isolated shower or storm or two. So we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, I want to get you a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the back half of the weekend. I think like what we saw earlier this morning, some clouds are going to build back in by sunrise tomorrow, thanks to the fact that the humidity builds overnight as well. It's going to be a warm and muggy start around 80 degrees by 7 a.m. 94 at noon. Plenty of sunshine returning for any lunchtime plans that you may have out and about. And you can see even more sun is expected into the later portions of the afternoon with that forecast high pointed around 104 degrees. Winds will be breezy also like today out of the south at about 10 to 15 gusting upwards of 20 to 25, especially as you head into the evening hours. Again, 102 in Bull Verde, 105 in Floresville. That forecast high tomorrow, 105 in Pleasanton, 104 in Rio Medina, 102 off to our northwest across portions of the hill country for places like Kerrville and stretching over to Comfort. Now, if that 104 verifies tomorrow, we should sit shy of the record of 106 set back in the 1960s. But after that, you can see that we have daily opportunities to come close to tie or break the existing record highs going forward. In fact, as that high pressure strengthens yet again by the middle to later portions of next week, it is possible that those afternoon highs come up by a degree or two yet again. So here's where that high pressure is right now. You can see the rain and storm making energy just floating around the northern edge of that high pressure system. Even some severe weather possible well off to our northeast near New York as well as DC with an area of low pressure moving closer to the New England states. 
Watch what happens here over the next couple of days. So by Monday and Tuesday, that center is going to start to wobble around a little bit more and eventually position itself over the four corners region. And if we can find that, that may leave just enough room for a weak frontal boundary to push through the Lone Star State. It's not going to affect our temperatures, but what it could do is provide just enough lift for an isolated shower or a storm, especially on Tuesday. We need to manage expectations here because most of us are still unfortunately going to miss out, but just know there's a chance and we'll continue to monitor that for you in the days ahead. But until then, because it has been so incredibly dry across the region, fire danger, that's been a big topic of conversation over the past several days. And once again, tomorrow that is going to be the theme high fire danger is expected so all of the fire safety tips that we've been talking about continue to practice fire safety keep those tips in the back of your mind for any back half of the weekend's plans and really into next week as well because for the most part it is still going to be pretty dry out there more triple digit heat so with those kiddos heading back to school make sure that they take the water bottle with them because yes, it is still going to be a hot stretch for us here in South Central Texas. Buckle in. I'm going to start pushing for that 59 day record because when I did that last year, it seemed like the heat petered out pretty quick. Yeah, quickly. it so did. Let's push for that record. <laughs> there you go. Something positive. Yeah. All right, they're going to need to add a little more space to the San Antonio Spurs wing of the Basketball Hall of Fame. It grew <laughs> yes. a little bit today. No doubt, yes. It's the highly anticipated night of the 2023 hoops of Hall of Fame class officially being enshrined in I always tell my kids, dream big. And when you say your dream to somebody and he's not laughing at you, you don't dream big enough. And so when I was in France, they would always say, oh, you're too small, you're too skinny, you will never make it. But I'm the one who's laughing now. Tony Parker's captivating Hall of Fame speech is one of many heartfelt moments from tonight's enshrinement ceremony. It's time for Big Board Sports. The spectacular basketball history here in Texas and in San Antonio specifically was once again on display in tonight's 2023 Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony. It was a night filled with laughter and undeniable emotion when the inductees took the stage for their Hall of Fame speeches. And guess who was there to witness it in person? Larry, how special was tonight? Yeah, thank you very much, Mary. You know what? Tonight was very special indeed. My first time covering this event, and it's something I'll truly never forget. Now, what a great night here at Symphony Hall in Springfield, Massachusetts. The Basketball Hall of Fame Class of 2023 is now enshrined. From the red carpet to the ceremony itself, it was a stellar evening for basketball. Former Spurs point guard Tony Parker was the first enshrinee to take the mic this evening. He was presented by his Hall of Fame teammates, Manu Ginobili and Tim Duncan. Center Pal Gasol, who played three seasons with San Antonio, was presented presented by the great Tony Kukoc. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich was presented by the big three and 5-0 himself, David Robinson. And Becky Hammond, who got in around 7 this morning after coaching the Aces last night, was the last member of the Spurs to talk. She was presented by Cheryl Swoops and Teresa Weatherspoon. Here are some of our favorite moments from their speeches. My rookie year, Timmy didn't talk to me, my rookie year. And people think I'm crazy when I say that, but it's true. Timmy don't like French people. He doesn't like my French accent. It's not until I play good in my rookie year against Gary Payton, finally say one word, actually two words, three words. I remember, basically we'll be all right. I just love the opportunity to play with you guys. Uh, it, was, it was truly an amazing experience and I'll always forever be thankful. Thank you RC also for the opportunity. My wife and I will always cherish those three years in, in San Antonio. He spoke courage into me with a phone call as I was getting ready to coached that first summer league team in 2015. He said, just be you, you're gonna be great. You've changed the trajectory of my life and of so many other girls and young women. Thank you, I love you. For me, it's unimaginable. And that's not an attempt to be humble. This is unimaginable. Uh, and for anybody that's uh, gone through this and felt it, uh, 
it's not something you think about as you're growing up. Uh, it's unimaginable. I'll tell you what, those are some great speeches, and Tony Parker was very funny tonight. We'll have more from the enshrinement ceremony tomorrow at 5.30, then on the night beat and on instant replay. All right, let's send it back to San Antonio where Mary has more. Thank you, Larry. What a night. Well, later in this show, we take a look at the Cowboys preseason debut against Jacksonville. It was a good one. And I love that Larry got to go. Yeah. It's really special for him. Great group of inductees there tonight. Thanks, Mary. We'll see you in just a little bit. Coming up on the night beat, two restaurants with the troubled health inspection history back in the spotlight. What they did wrong behind their kitchen doors. Plus, police investigated a San Antonio cemetery after finding headstones and grave markers in places they shouldn't have been. How they said they got there and why one man doesn't believe it. Here's your reminder that now is the time to get your tickets to this year's 2023 KSAT Pigskin Classic. One of high school football's biggest events is even bigger than last year because we've added a whole extra night of football. Yep, the two-day event starts with one game on Friday, August 25th, and three games on Saturday, August 26th. Tickets are now on sale. If you're a KSAT insider, you can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house and a chance to hang out with us. Just scan this QR code on your screen for more information or just head to KSAT.com. Roaches and dirty conditions lead to reinspections for a local coffee shop and convenience store with a history of low scores. And it's not the first time I've reported on some of the problems behind their kitchen doors. Picnic Foods, located in the 1200 block of South General McMullen, had their June inspection score of 81 posted right on their front door. It was a two-point drop from the 83 they had when they were on BKD back in January. This time, there was a roach in a cooler on the service line, as well as many flies in the business. That roach came in contact with ready-to-eat lettuce and cut tomatoes. The pickle tongs were rusty. The ice scoop found on top of the dirty ice machine and the ice bucket was broken and cracked. The inside of the ice machine had a pink and black mold-like substance growing on the walls. They also needed to clean up grease that was caked on the floors, equipment, and walls. A reinspection was ordered. Lucy's Cafe in the 500 block of West Mitchell Street earned an 82. Some foods were found held at improper temperatures. A bag of chili powder had live weevils, while a bag of dried shrimp had ants. Small live roaches were also spotted near a sink. Metal racks in a refrigerator had peeling paint, and they needed to do a thorough cleaning. They were given 10 days to make corrections before reinspection. Jim's Restaurant, located at the corner of Culebra and Loop 1604, earned an 86 and a reinspection. This is the third time the business has been on BKD. Raw chicken in a cooler was too warm, it was moved to a working cooler. There were live roaches along the cooking line and in a non-working cooler. The business told to intensify cleaning efforts to remove food and grease buildup on the walls, floors, and ceilings. They were also told to stop storing employee hats on top of clean plates. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSET 12 News. Put your hats on the plates. Happening around America, a Pittsburgh neighborhood is in ruin after a home exploded this morning. Take a look. Investigators say that explosion flattened one home and then the flames from that blast destroyed two nearby houses as well. At least a dozen more homes in the neighborhood, all dealing with some sort of damage. Several people were sent to the hospital after the blast. First responders still digging through the debris, trying to find three unaccounted for people. Well, the Food and Drug Administration is issuing a warning about tests for pregnancy, ovulation, UTIs, and other conditions. The manufacturer, Universal Meditech Incorporated, has stopped all operations and is no longer providing support for the tests. The company has recalled tests from shelves, and the FDA is advising anyone with tests from that brand to throw them out because they are not effective. The tests were distributed under brand names such as AC&C, HealthyWiser, Home Health US, and Prestige Biotech. Coming up next on the night beat, a cemetery scattered with broken headstones and grave markers prompted police to investigate. They say there's no foul play, but one man we talked to says he's not buying it.
Damaged and broken headstones scattered across the cemetery prompted police and city officials to investigate. That was at City Cemetery number three last week. Now the investigation is done and police believe there's no foul play involved. The night team's John Paul Barajas, though, has statements from the city and SAPD and spoke with a man that's questioning the results. Well, what I'd like to say, I can't say, but it's uh, I think that's a bunch of baloney. Broken headstones cover the ground of historic city cemetery number three on the east side. Many are toppled over like the one belonging to Ruben Lozano's great grandfather. Others sliced in half or left in pieces. What was once a criminal mischief case is no longer being investigated. San Antonio police say there is no suspected foul play. Lozano disagrees. No, I just think they need to do a little bit more homework and do some check, come out and check and see. It looks like they've been hit with something and they just snap. San Antonio Parks and Recreation sent us this statement that reads in part, it is uncertain whether the headstone was intentionally pushed or if environmental factors over time caused the original bonding to deteriorate. Adding deterioration over time is a frequent issue in historic cemeteries. The orientation on it. Zano admits maybe not all were vandalized. Like this one here, you, see, you can see where the soil is eroding underneath. Down here But he for questions a while. how natural causes can break only the top half of a headstone. It just doesn't make sense to me. Somebody had to hit it. As for his great-grandfather's marker, Lozano's photo shows it was standing upright about three months ago. Which way is this one going to fall if it comes off the face down, right? Which way is that one sitting? It's all <laughs> twisted around. Right. Nah, I don't buy it. Lozano hopes to fix it, but with so much history in one place, with headstones dating back to the 18 and 1900s, just breaks my heart when I see it. He hopes SAPD and the city reconsider their decision. Since it's considered a historical area, I'd like to see more repairs being done. They're trying to preserve history. Well, there's, there's an opportunity here. And that was John Paul Barajas reporting. City Parks and Rec says they'll get Lozano in touch with the Office of Historic Preservation to help reset the headstone, which Lozano says would likely cost him around 800 bucks if he had to do it alone. The city also says they perform standard maintenance services like mowing and litter pickup, and that the department's responsibility is to ensure the cemetery's condition does not create or cause any public safety issues. All right, let's go back outside with live cam here tonight. Temperature still hovering close to that 90 degree mark, starting to see that drop off into the upper 80s. All right, I know over the past several weeks, we have just thrown a lot of heat stats at you, but what else is there to talk about, right? Yes, today's high of 105 broke the record, but it also makes for the ninth day in a row that we have at least tied or broken the existing record high. We started this streak back on August 4th. Now the good news is tomorrow we should break that streak. We've got a forecast high of 104. The record is 106, but it is still going to be plenty hot over the next several days. We do have that isolated chance for a shower on Tuesday, so we'll talk about that in just a second, as well as the peak of the Perseid meteor shower, which occurs overnight. We'll get you the best time frame to maybe step outside and view a few meteors coming up in a few. You get a broken record. You get a broken record. Everybody gets, <laughs> Everybody a, broken gets record. a broken record. All we sound like a broken record yes, talking about broken records. Mm -hmm. But you are talking about something really cool, too. Yes. yes. Okay. There's yes. something neat to see in the sky. <laughs> there definitely is, especially if you get out generally before 3 o'clock in the morning, I think, because then we're going to start to see some clouds build back in. So check out this photo that was sent in from our friend Sky Watcher. This was taken very early this morning before the sun came up. You can see the caption there. Not exactly the best conditions to view shooting stars. I'll try again later tonight. That's because we've seen building humidity through the overnight hours. And when we see that, we start to see some of the cloud cover build back in, especially right before sunrise. Okay, so here's the thing. The Perseid meteor shower. This is one of the better known meteor showers that folks in the northern hemisphere can typically tap into and at least view. It peaks tonight and early tomorrow morning. So here's the best bet. If you do want to 
step outside, test your luck to see if you can find a few shooting stars out there. You're going to want to look to the northeast, generally in the time frame between midnight and 3 o'clock in the morning, because then after that, I think we're going to start to see some of those clouds build back in. It's best to find a dark viewing spot away from the bright city lights and also a spot that's not really obstructed by a lot of trees and a lot of tall buildings and structures. Sky gazers have actually seen up to 90 meteors an hour under dark skies in the past with this meteor shower. The good news is the moon phase, it's a waning crescent, so that's good for viewing. It's only about 10% illuminated, so the sky is going to be relatively darker as long as you can get out there before some of those clouds build back in. So good luck if you do decide to step outside very early in the morning. Again, here's a look at your Sunday. We're going to start off near about 80 degrees and then the morning clouds are quickly going to burn off. Very similar to what we saw out there earlier this morning. 94 at noon, 104 is that forecast high, and then still hot by about 7 to 8 o'clock, starting to see those temperatures fall into the 90s. And again, it will be breezy. Winds out of the south, 10 to 15, gusting upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. And of course, our heat high, it is still with us in some capacity over the next several days. So this is what we've got for you. More daily chances to climb into the triple digits. Yes, some more records expected to be tied or broken in the week ahead. So here is your Sunday afternoon. 104 in town, 105 in Pleasanton, 107 that forecast high in Catula, stretching over to Carrizo Springs, 106 in Del Rio. And also what we've seen the past several days, yes, the humidity builds overnight, but into the afternoon, those dew points drop off just a bit more. So that helps with the heat index value doesn't make it feel as awful out there during the hottest part of the day. But what that's not good for is the fire danger. Lower afternoon humidity combine that with the dry grasses and the vegetation in place and those breezy south winds picking back up. It's still going to be elevated throughout the day tomorrow. We've got those red flag warnings in effect, so just something to keep in mind for the back half of the weekend's plans. All those fire safety tips, a good thing to remember. And as that high pressure system moves ever so slightly west, especially on Tuesday, it is possible that we find an isolated shower or a storm. It's not going to be for everybody. Cautious optimism, but at least it's something that we'll be keeping and tabs on for maybe a few lucky select folks into early next week, guys. At this point, I feel like if anyone wins, we all win. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I just want somebody to get rain. <laughs> Rooting for those five raindrops to hit you. Yes. Thank you so much, Mia. All right, football is back. It's fake football. It's meaningless football, <laughs> but football is back on our television. That's a good thing. <laughs> fake football, I like that. It is meaningful, like you said, and Deuce Vaughn and the Cowboys challenging the Jaguars in their NFL preseason debut. Plus, SAFC is in action against New Mexico United coming up after the break. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. The Cowboys' young studs put on a show in Dallas's preseason debut against Jacksonville. Rookie running back Deuce Vaughn standing at 5'5 five five made plays, racking up 56 total yards along with a touchdown. DeMarvion Overshone also turning heads. He had a couple clutch stops. And let's take a look at the scoreboard. Dallas falls 28 to 23. Still a productive day overall, though. Next up for the Cowboys is Seattle. The Texans led off week one of the preseason, scoring three touchdowns and a win over New England. One of the big storylines from that game on Thursday was rookie wideout Tank Dell. Dell finished with five catches for 65 yards and a touchdown. You're looking at the TD, splendid recovery. He eventually hauls in the pass from Davis Mills. He now has everyone's attention. He's electric and he's always open. He's been open in training camp a lot. Right? He's he's precise with his route running. Uh, he was it was fun to see him in the in the run game. Right, his intent when he was going to block right safeties or corners. Right, his intent it was it was really fun to see Tank just to see him in that moment and to see the moment not be too big for him. Next chance to see Dells and the rest of the squad is in a week at home against the Dolphins. 
San Antonio FC and its relentless attack are battling New Mexico United tonight. SAFC entered the match in second place in the USL Western Conference. The club had previously given up the first goal in its last four matches, still winning three of the four, but not the case tonight. Here's a look at the final. San Antonio earns the clean sheet, defeating New Mexico United 3-0 SAFC on a three-game win streak. We know they can keep it up. Oh, yeah. They're good enough. 3-0. Three 3-0. Nil, right? three nil. Three That's nil. what you say it, Tim. <laughs> We're teaching Tim about soccer. <laughs> or football. Thanks, Mary. <laughs> we'll Thank you. Right, we'll be right back. As we get ready for back to school, KSAT hosted a town hall event to help answer all those questions parents, students, and even some of the school staff may have going into the new school year. And while many parents keep in contact with their child's teacher, another great resource is the school counselor. Dr. Melanie Morgan, a counselor at Southside ISD, goes over the benefits of parents creating a connection to help their child succeed even beyond the classroom walls. And then we're able to meet with them, you know, have them come in and meet with us. We can teach them the same coping strategies or skills that we're teaching to their kids, teach them so that they can do the same things with their children at home as well. If you'd like to hear more about creating these connections or how different schools around the Alamo City are keeping students safe this year, you can watch that town hall live stream right now on KSAT.com. All right, archaeologists have uncovered the lost remains of a village outside of Mexico City and based on the ceramics found there, you see some of the stuff there, around that site, experts date the village to around, get this, 450 to 650 A.D. Unbelievable. According to Mexico's National Institute of History and Anthropology, Several remnants of buildings were found within the settlement. Archaeologists believe the village may have housed a community of fishermen and gatherers as well as artisans. Look at that. That's incredible. That stuff looks amazingly good condition. Yes. As old well as preserved. Very right. well preserved. Yep. All right. So let's send things back outside because it's a little bit windy, like what we've seen over the past several evenings after the sun goes down, those temperatures drop off pretty dramatically and that helps those winds crank back up. So yeah, for folks that were out and about for Saturday night plans, seeing some wind gusts generally upwards of about 20 to 25 miles per hour in and around San Antonio. And speaking of those temperatures, here's where we are right now. We are in the upper 80s and a few low 90s out there, 88 over at SA International, 88 in Canyon Lake, as well as the south side, Stinson, 89 in Divine, 93 still out west in Uvalde. Now I do think for most of us as we head into the overnight hours, yes, we'll start to see some of the cloud cover build back in, especially by sunrise, and we'll start off in the upper 70s and right around that 80 degree mark here in town. Those clouds will start to burn off, though, throughout the first half of the day. By 11 a.m., our temperature already climbing to 90 degrees, 97 by 1 p.m., forecast high of 104, especially by 5 o'clock, the peak heating time of the day. So 104 in Castroville, 102 in Comfort, 105 possible in Bay. Bandera 105 as well out east in New Braunfels stretching over to Nixon for your Sunday afternoon. Now we've been talking about that high pressure system, how it's still not going anywhere for the most part over the next several days, which is why temperatures are still going to stay elevated in the triple digits. But you can see by Monday and Tuesday, the center of that high pressure system moves farther west, and that could leave just enough room for a weak frontal boundary to move into the Lone Star State. And when the lift from that boundary combined with the moisture in place, sure, it's possible that we see an isolated shower or storm. Again, it's not going to be for everybody, but we'll see what we can find. Anything definitely helps. It has been more than 700 days mm. since the entire KSAT 12 viewing area was considered drought free. That was early September of 2021, nearing two years there. So, of course, with the dry conditions in place, fire danger is going to be elevated at times still over the next week or so. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. All those fire safety tips, very important. And until then, just stay hydrated and be careful because those triple digits are not going anywhere, at least over the next seven days. Well, we reached the halfway point of August this, this week, so yeah. we got that going. There's on. that. Okay, there we go, Tim. We <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks stay, so much for watching. Cool. We'll see you tomorrow for some more positive outlooks on the weather. <laughs>
Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A multi-vehicle crash ending with one child in critical condition. One San Antonio police are now saying about the cause. A house explosion in Pennsylvania leaves several houses destroyed and damaged. The latest from first responders as some of those residents have still not been found. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, already 80 degrees today. How hot did it get yesterday? Will that hot streak continue? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments for now. Good morning. It is Sunday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So Good morning. yesterday after work, did you make it out and about? Did you go outside? Did you have to? I well, I watered, which I always do. Nice. I went swimming inside. Smart. And then we went shopping, but not at a school supplies store. Okay, so you avoided the tax-free weekend crowd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, did you shop inside or outside? Inside. Okay. Because, but even just that brief like walk, and it's just in the parking lot on the asphalt yeah. by like five o'clock. Brutal, Sarah. Bad, bad in the afternoon, particularly between the hours of noon and 6 p.m. We got up to 105 yesterday, guys, which broke a record for the ninth day in a row in San mm. Antonio. Yeah, today we may be shy of a record by a whopping two degrees, but it's still going to be hot. Outside right now, you can see we've got some clouds early this morning. It's 81 degrees, not too bad. There's a breeze too. South winds at about 15 miles per hour. Uh, but yeah, get outside right now while you can because by 10 it's going to be 86 noon 94 104 for the high we're going to have south southeast winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour during the afternoon when it's the hottest and the driest we will have high fire danger once again today so we're kind of on the copy and paste cycle of the forecast coming up though i'll have a look at how the texas power grid will potentially handle this week's heat there's going to be a day or two where it comes close supply and demand come close so I'll show you which day we really need to be on alert for and we'll talk about a very slim chance for rain in the forecast in the week ahead. Max. Thank you, sir. San Antonio police now investigating a multi vehicle crash that ended with a child critically injured. So take a look. This was the scene yesterday. This all unfolded near Bassey Road near Buckeye Avenue. Police on the scene telling us a truck ran a stop sign, hitting an SUV, causing it to spin out and then hit a third passing vehicle. A child had to be cut from the seatbelt. Serious condition taken to the hospital. San Antonio police still investigating, trying to figure out who exactly is responsible. At last check, though, no charges have been filed. San Antonio police have arrested a man who they say set two homes on fire earlier this year. Police say 38 year old Alfred Malagon set his neighbor's house on fire on April 8th. The same night, another home was also burned and the investigation revealed that he intentionally set both those fires. His bond is set at $50,000. Well, a neighborhood in Pennsylvania, specifically a Pittsburgh suburb, in ruins after a home explosion, an explosion ending with at least one person dead, several more in the neighborhood still unaccounted for. Take a look. This was the scene yesterday afternoon. This is a neighborhood in Pennsylvania, and authorities say the explosion destroyed a home. Flames from that house blasted destroying two neighboring homes, several people in the hospital. First responders still through the morning searching for victims buried under the debris. At least three people still unaccounted for. And another explosion in Missouri leaves 16 people injured after gas flames, gas fumes built up in the engine of a boat triggering an explosion. This happened Friday at Marina at Lake of the Ozarks. A spokesperson from Missouri Highway Patrol said someone was refueling the boat that led to gas fumes building up in the engine. 16 people are injured and police are still investigating. And a wild scene unfolding in Northern Virginia. Take a look at your screen. This was yesterday, a traffic crash led to a police chase involving a stolen ambulance. Police responding to a multi-vehicle crash when one of the drivers in the crash took off, then stole an ambulance. That driver crashed into nearly a dozen different vehicles before finally coming to a stop. Police took the driver into custody. Luckily, no injuries were reported. Well, messages sent to the sky yesterday as families and friends of Zachary Conley Moreno released balloons all in his honor. Zach was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died in a plane crash in Wisconsin just a few weeks ago. His grieving family tells Avery Everett this tragedy has brought dozens of people together. We sit together, they, they 
We want to send them a little message. There's no easy way to reach the sky. It's very hard. But family of Zachary Colley Moreno are hoping to send one final message. And we want to let him know that his legacy will go on and his passion will go on as much as we can possibly do that for him. A life lost doing something he loved. Zach was one of two people from New Braunfels that died in a Wisconsin plane crash just a few weeks ago. He was so young and uh, he had so much to give. A lover of history and traveling. Family and friends say Zach pursued everything he could with passion and they hope to do the same with one final send off. I wrote to him, fly with the angels, Zach. And why'd you write that? Because he loved to be on, on planes. But this takeoff came with tears. It feels really proud that he was able to do that and reach out to so many people. His grandmother says she still can't say goodbye. We love him. But she's holding on, knowing he's finally flying high. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. The Commemorative Air Force in San Marcos has set up a scholarship fund in Zach's memory. You can find those details on our website right now at KSAT.com. All right, the Alamo welcoming visitors from far and wide, celebrating a very special birthday. Davy Crockett, the king of the wild frontier, was born on August 17th, 237 years ago this year. The Alamo started celebrating a few days early. Crockett was a Tennessee congressman who played an important role in the Texas Revolution and died defending the Alamo. History lovers and families visiting the Alamo to learn more about the last stand through living history exhibits and other demonstrations. I got to do uh, um, some shooting because now I'm officially a, a Alamo defender. If you couldn't make it out there, don't worry. The Alamo will have free admission next Thursday, August 17th for Crockett's actual birthday anniversary. And I know growing up <laughs> in South Texas, those Davy Crockett hats, I think everyone had one at one point in their childhood. Did you ever come visit Texas as a, as a kid? As a kid, no. But when I did move here, one of my, I think I actually have pictures of me holding some of the old muskets and the old rifles mm -hmm. at, I think, exactly David Crockett's birthday celebration. And I was actually going to pull up the picture. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. It's actually a really cool exhibit. So if you have time with you and the family, head out there. And if you take pictures out there with the family, send it to KSAC Connect. We'll show them. <laughs> Time now, 607, 80 degrees. After the break, blue sea creatures found on the South Texas seashore. They are not harmless. They might look. They're actually pretty beautiful. But we'll tell you about the Portuguese man of war and what to do if you get stung by one. Oh, no. It does not feel good. Let me tell you that. Oh, no, we know a lot of people through the summer, especially with the some of the last weekends until they head back to school, headed to the shore, headed to the local swimming pools, trying to do anything to beat the heat. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey. How hot it's going to get today. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. All right, looks can be deceiving, especially when it comes to these two blue sea creatures you're going to find at the South Texas seashore. And here's the scary part. One can give you a nasty sting. Ah, Padre Island National Seashore officials, they are telling people to avoid the per Portuguese man of war. They typically float on currents. They actually look really cool. They could float up to the shoreline during the spring through the late summer season. If you do get stung, you're urged to place the sting site under hot water, apply warm compresses. If you want to learn more about the sea creatures or just check them out, other things that you can find at the Texas Beach, head to ksat.com. I've never seen those before, but I've also really never been to uh, Texas I, Seashores. Well, I, I grew up mm -hmm. on the beach in Corpus Christi, and we would see these all the time. August, as you always see, jellyfish man o' war. Um, my brother got stung by one, and he's nice. to this day says that it is the worst sting, worst pain he's ever <sighs> felt. But meat tenderizer. Oh. Yeah. Like I don't know. If, I don't know if it worked. But you I just beating him with the meat. I don't. Tenderizer? I don't know. No, the, the like salty the, solution. The, no, no, oh. no. I was like, what are we not doing here? No, no, not like uh, the um, you know the. The stuff that you put on meat. Yeah, like the salt. The salt. Yeah, okay. And apparently, salt snail. I don't know if it Got was it. like my grandmother being like, put meat tenderizer on it. Yeah. No, that's the thing. But it, that it, worked. It helped. Okay. It, it helped. Totally noted. Also, <laughs> another thing works, but 
probably shouldn't do it. I think that's what they're laughing at in the back. I, that's the, the, from the Friends episode. From the Friends. If yeah. you know, you know. Joey you Chandler. Go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, we know about the heat. <laughs> yeah, we know about the heat. We were talking about Crockett Day, right? Mm -hmm. And I was able to get your picture on Now, look at that. Connect. Quick action. Take a look at this Max with a big gun I'm on Crockett Day. I'm telling you, we don't mess around out there. Abs Apparently not. No. no. Wow. It was so much fun. Thank you to everyone who worked at the Alamo. It gave us the... Uh, the full visitor treatment. It was fantastic. That's awesome. This was early 2020, right? This was I mean. March 2nd, 2020. So yeah. like two wow. weeks before the world shut oh down. Oh my goodness. Speaking of uh, the weather today, we are going to be hot all across the state of Texas. Uh, the white numbers you see here are the forecast highs. The yellow numbers are the records for the day. So today in San Antonio, it is going to be hard for us to get to the record of 106. We're forecasting 104, which is plenty hot. It just may not be record hot. As you can see, the entire state will be broiling. Let's take a look at ERCOT, uh, the power grid and the forecast supply and demand. The forecast supply here is in this blue line. The forecast demand is in this red bar and this is at 7 p.m. Why am I showing 7 p.m.? Well, because at 7 p.m. we start to see solar energy go down, but the demand is still very high for power because it's still hot at 7 p.m. You can see that there is one day in particular that we're really going to want to watch carefully and that's Tuesday. Tuesday that supply is going to be very close to the forecast demand. Now, uh, so far, the forecast supply is expected to meet the demand. It's just going to be close. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Tuesday is also a day where across Texas, the weather will be shifting a little bit. Here in San Antonio, it's still going to be hot, but there is going to be a bit of a different weather pattern on Tuesday for parts of Texas. Now that heat high is still going to maintain its strength on Monday. You can see that we'll be at 105 tomorrow on Monday, but notice that across North Texas, temperatures start to fall a little bit. Uh, below Low 100 degrees. That's because there's actually going to be a weak cool front moving through North Texas on Monday. That'll bring some rain to parts of Waco, Central Texas, maybe even Dallas as well. But it's still going to be hot here in San Antonio. It's still going to be 105 in San Antonio. That front, as it moves through the hill country and towards San Antonio, is going to fall apart. It's not going to be bringing us cooler weather. Instead, it'll bring us drier weather. Now, that'll actually elevate fire danger even more on Tuesday when that front moves through and falls apart on Tuesday morning. So again, it's still going to be hot behind that front 104 in San Antonio. However, there will be that boundary across South Central Texas, and so there is a small 10% chance for a stray shower or storm on Tuesday. Don't bank on the rain, bank on the heat but a little bit of a weather pattern change for parts of Texas. But then another heat high builds overhead and we're right back at it. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, temperatures are going to be well above 100 for most of us across the state of Texas. So all of that to say there is a very small chance for an isolated shower on Tuesday, but the heat remains and the heat will persist. 81 degrees outside right now, south winds at about 15 miles per hour. It's in the upper 70s in the hill country and out west of San Antonio. Here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Mostly cloudy right now. By 10, it's going to be 86. By noon, 94, mostly sunny. And in the afternoon, 104 for the high temperature right around 5 o'clock. Elsewhere across South Central Texas, we are going to be continuing to see high fire danger. So please remember to practice safety today, especially in the afternoon when fire danger will be the highest. Temperatures 106 in Del Rio, 105 in Pleasanton, 108 in Catula, 103 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville. And again, look at the forecast over the next several days. We are going to be over 100 every single day. Uh, bless you. Goodness, there is something in the air here. It's not molds. Molds are still low. It's and dust. It's the dust in the studio probably. By Saturday, that'll be our 54th 100 degree day, guys. Jeez. Okay, like it's sad that I'm like, oh, but look, 103 by next Saturday. Yeah, that is sad. <laughs> that is what we have to look forward to. And I, a lot of people have been asking me, Sarah, when is this going to end? Tell us something we can hope for. Mm -hmm. There is honestly nothing in the weather pattern over the next several days that makes me think we're going to break it anytime soon, especially over the next seven days. It eventually will end. Absolutely. When I'm the hoping Earth's atmosphere tilts. tilts away, right where the Earth tilts away. If the atmosphere tilts away. Oh, not yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys for sticking with us during this hot weather pattern. We'll continue to keep you posted. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 617, already 80 degrees. We'll be right back.
Hollywood stars from a hit movie and television show like Stranger Things and Mandalorian and 90210 are coming to San Antonio this Let's fall go. for Big Texas Comic Con. The event is set for October 6th through the 8th at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. General admission starts at $26. You can read more about the prices and the event at KSAT.com. All right, so we got the guy from Stranger Things. Yeah, the sheriff. What's the his sheriff? Name? I don't remember. I don't know. But he's pretty fantastic. I thought he was funny. Yeah, it was good. Uh, didn't we have like um, Pedro no. Pascal will not be here. I got excited when he said Mandalorian. Mmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Our producer's like, stop talking about Comic Con. Trying to go. <laughs> Maybe. Now. 621, 80 degrees. Okay, this is such a cool story. We see mascots around school pep rallies, football games, and so much more. But what about who actually makes the mascot come to life? So coming up next, SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky takes us behind the scenes of a San Antonian mascot maker. When I first started working here, it was like, yeah, this is the job to have. It's creative, I can work with my hands, yes. Becky Wilburn may have one of the coolest jobs in town. She's a mascot maker. Actually, I never saw a day in my life. Like I said, 24 years ago, I walked into the shop looking for a job, and my job was to wash clothes and send them upstairs and put them away, all the costumes. And I, one day I came down, and hey, I had nothing to do, and they go, well, I'm doing a church's chicken. Can you do the eyes? So I was showing, you know, Miss Moore was showing me how to do the eyes and everything. I was like, and I took off from there. This storage room is full of Becky's creations, each character made by hand. Much of her work includes local mascots that we've all become very familiar with. The most difficult mascot I have made was doing my first muscle suit. We did Robinson, um, I don't know if it's an elementary or middle school, but it was a rocket. That thing was, I never made a muscle suit before, but I did it. Guess what else she did? Becky helped make one of the most iconic mascots in the Alamo City, the Spurs Coyote. I've seen the coyote and I've seen friends on Facebook with the coyote because I wonder if they know I made that thing, you know, but nobody knows who makes the coyote. Now they do. And while Becky has been here over 20 years, she now has a team of mascot makers. It was just me back then. I didn't have people that are as creative as Marshall and Chandler in the back. And with them, nothing's impossible with us. We are making stuff that I never made before. I love to build creatures. I love to build mascots. And I think that's why I'm still here. Does it feel like work? No. It's very clear Becky loves her job, but does she realize that her team is creating much more than just costumes? Mascots were mascots for me, and when they come in and they scream because they've seen the, the mascot that they want, there it is right there. That's worth all the wages of raise or anything. So watching people come in and have that smile, say, that's what we want. So the next time you see a mascot at a school, college, or a Spurs game, remember Becky, Chandler, and Marshall here at Starline Costumes. You know how many times they ask me, what do you do? He goes, well, I make custom mascots for businesses and schools. Mm -hmm. A what? Yeah. A mascot. You know what a mascot is? They look at me with mm -hmm. Spurs Coyote. Oh, yeah, yeah, now we know what it's like. These are the best tools ever. And over the years, you can see behind me, I can prove it. For Case at 12, we're shooting for the stars here. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It is 6.30 this morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning Good with morning. us. Good morning. And here's the breaking news. It is already hot outside. I know. <laughs> did you did you get outside at all yesterday? Uh, no. I walked to the car mm -hmm. and then met up with friends and then walked back to the car. But we stayed inside primarily. Big windows, so still got heat coming in. But that was pretty much the extent of my Max rarely. He's like an, yeah. you know, like an indoor cat. Like I yeah, indoor that, like, cat. They'll, they'll like go to the window, put a pot, and they're like, I'm good. I'm good. We don't yeah. need to go outside, especially when it's 105, Sarah. Oh my goodness, yes. And I have a method to save money and power, okay? Mm. So basically, I set my thermostat during the day to 78. I know. But I close all of the blinds and everything, mm -hmm. and it ends up not being too bad. But it is still going to be very hot today and fire danger will be high. We've got a red flag warning in effect once again throughout most of South Central Texas that includes San Antonio. 
Fire danger is high today, so let's do our part to help prevent creating and spreading grass fires. Outside right now, not too bad. It's 79 in Helotus, 79 in Bilverde. Good morning in Bandera, where it's 77 degrees, 77 in Hondo, 79 in Converse, 80 at Stinson, 81 in Gonzales. This is the forecast for the day, though. 86 at 10, 94 at noon, 100 already by 2 p.m., and 104 for the afternoon high temperature. We're going to have southeast winds today at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now coming up in the forecast yesterday made our ninth day in a row of record heat in San Antonio. I'll have a look at which records are in jeopardy in the week ahead and we'll talk about a very slim chance for some rain for a few folks in the forecast coming up. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, 22 year old Jose Luis Contreras arrested after trying to kidnap a woman at a Target store in East Texas. Officials tell us that the attempted kidnapping happened Wednesday at a Target store in Magnolia. The victim getting into her vehicle when Contreras allegedly grabbed her from behind tried to get her into his vehicle. Uh, the woman was able to escape. Contreras now facing charges of attempted kidnapping. It's a felony currently being held in the Montgomery County Jail. A woman is fighting for her life this morning after she was shot several times at a gas station in downtown San Antonio. So this happened at a Valero in the 900 block of West Hildebrand Avenue yesterday afternoon. Officers say they found the woman shot in the head and chest when they arrived. She was rushed to a nearby hospital and at last check was in critical condition. We don't know much about the suspect. Police believe it was a man, but don't know what led up to the shooting or how he got away. And losing a loved one to fentanyl is what families here in Bear County have been sharing their stories over that will soon be seen around the world in a form of a documentary. Case that's Camelia Juarez invited to watch one of those documentary interviews here in the Alamo City. One family telling her this documentary, it's helping their broken hearts start to heal. I need to tell people, how do I do this? The real life stories of real life people. Everyone needs to know. It, it needs to be told. A pill that was not what he thought it was. The one pill from a friend. These are all families who lost a loved one to fentanyl. They're called angel families. They're all sharing their stories for a new documentary, hoping it will save someone's life. Many are from our own South Texas community. Jake wanted to live. He, he had a future and that was stolen from him. Martha Johnson from Shirts lost her grandson Jake after he mistakenly took a fentanyl-laced pill. She says it feels cathartic to talk about him. They're sharing our stories and we're, people are listening. And, and to us as the ones that are left behind that are hurting, it helps us and, and we, um, we heal. What are, what are those shining things that you remember about it? Glenn Muse is the director for Texas Pictures Documentaries and let us sit in on some of the interviews. We can make eye contact with the subject and the subject makes eye contact with us. Showing us how he makes the families more comfortable by using a device that blocks the camera. It's impactful. The documentary is connecting angel families together you know, the guy. through the interview process. I'm like, oh my goodness. That sounds like my story. Mm -hmm. I could relate to that and it helps me. But also online. Muse says the project started with a few dozen interviews on YouTube. Each video has nearly 50,000 views. And they're finding this series and finding some comfort in seeing that they're not alone. Camila Juarez, KSAT 12 News. So last month we had a fighting fentanyl town hall discussion right here at KSAT 12. We spoke with several people who had personal battles with fentanyl and some who even lost loved ones. The entire goal of the special, start a conversation with kids and loved ones about the many dangers of the deadly drug. You can watch that special right now, head to our website, and you can do so, pull out the phone, go to the camera app, scan the QR code on your screen, it'll take you right to the special. In your morning headlines, disbelief, sadness, now turning to anger and frustration for so many families in Hawaii. Much of the western part of the island of Maui charred by fast-moving wildfires. Five days ago, at least 80 people confirmed dead. Hundreds still have not been accounted for. Officials say more than 2,200 structures damaged, even destroyed. ABC's Melissa Don has the latest from Maui. 
Cadavers sniffing dogs searching the rubble in the historic town of Lahaina today as crews look for victims or any survivors of the fierce wildfires that struck on Tuesday. FEMA workers also on the ground with Hawaii Governor Josh Green on Saturday getting a close look at what is left. Not much. Patience, prayers, and perseverance. That's what we need. And we need that from everyone. That's not everyone in Maui County. That's from the whole world. The wildfires are now Hawaii's deadliest natural disaster in the state's history. Residents capturing this video as they evacuated, the flames glowing, wind blowing. Annalise Cochran ran to the ocean to survive, spending more than seven hours in the water. And while um, the fire was happening and the cars were exploding, uh, we would duck into the water and we would put our mouths as close to the surface as we could so that we could breathe. They will not let us get through. On Saturday, officials opened one route into West Maui for residents who must show proof of residence, but we saw many people turned away. We've been waiting here since 11 a.m. Uh, on uh, Wednesday morning. Yeah, I don't think they're handling this well at all. The state attorney general has announced a comprehensive review of Maui's evacuation policies, including systems for notifying residents to get out during emergencies. Notifications many here say they never received. There were multiple fires at the same time, and the circumstance was greatly complicated also by the heat and the speed with which the fire spread, destroying a great deal of infrastructure. Over time, we'll be able to figure out if we could have better protected people. Amid the grief, the community coming together to help one another. Families going through donations, sorting through supplies for those who lost everything. Melissa Don, ABC News, Maui. Well, back here at home, if you're headed out for a tax-free weekend, going to church, doing anything this weekend, this Sunday morning, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange shut down throughout at least today. TxDOT says the east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 not going to be open. Road works lasting through at least tomorrow morning, Monday morning at 5 a.m. We have some alternative routes posted for you right now. Just head to KSAT.com. San Antonio Parks and Rec is extending their pool season for another month. That's some good news there. Nine pools will remain open on the weekends until September 24th. Two of those nine pools will also be open on weekdays as well. Parks and Rec says this will help families stay cool as this, oh my gosh, triple digit heat continues. For a list of the pools that will remain open, just head to ksat.com. All right, we have a double header today on Leading SA. Two leaders of our community joining us live this morning at 8 and 8.30 a.m. At 8 a.m., set to be joined by the city manager, Eric Walsh, discussing the processes and procedures of the city budget, how our tax dollars are going to work, and how you can have your voice heard. Then at 8.30 a.m., the superintendent of Southside ISD joining us live, talking about the start of the school year, academic progress, expansion of the Southside, and of course, teacher pay, recruitment, and retention. If you have any questions you'd like to ask either individuals, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com, then join us in our next hour. Time now, just about 640, 80 degrees. Archaeologists have uncovered a 1,500-year-old village in Mexico City. What they found buried inside, that's still ahead of GMSA. And coming up, two restaurants with a troubled health inspection history. They're back in the spotlight. What they did wrong behind the kitchen door. Oh, my gosh. Another one. Another one. Another one. Well, we know this song and dance. It's hot out there. Please be safe. Triple digits in our forecast this week. Sarah Spivey will let us know about that when we come back. Welcome back. Roaches in dirty conditions lead to reinspections for a local coffee shop and convenience store with a history of low health scores. And it's not the first time get Tim Gerber has reported on these problems behind their kitchen doors. Picnic Foods, located in the 1200 block of South General McMullen, had their June inspection score of 81 posted right on their front door. It was a two-point drop from the 83 they had when they were on BKD back in January. This time, there was a roach in a cooler on the service line, as well as many flies in the business. That roach came in contact with ready-to-eat lettuce and cut tomatoes. The pickle tongs were rusty. The ice scoop found on top of the dirty ice machine and the ice bucket was broken and cracked. The inside of the ice machine had a pink and black mold-like substance growing on the walls. 
They also needed to clean up grease that was caked on the floors, equipment, and walls. A reinspection was ordered. Lucy's Cafe in the 500 block of West Mitchell Street earned an 82. Some foods were found held at improper temperatures. A bag of chili powder had live weevils, while a bag of dried shrimp had ants. Small live roaches were also spotted near a sink. Metal racks in a refrigerator had peeling paint, and they needed to do a thorough cleaning. They were given 10 days to make corrections before reinspection. Jim's Restaurant, located at the corner of Culebra and Loop 1604, earned an 86 and a reinspection. This is the third time the business has been on BKD. Raw chicken in a cooler was too warm. It was moved to a working cooler. There were live roaches along the cooking line and in a non-working cooler. The business told to intensify cleaning efforts to remove food and grease buildup on the walls, floors, and ceilings. They were also told to stop storing employee hats on top of clean plates. From behind the kitchen door, Tim Gerber, KSET 12 News. Yeah. So here's the thing. We run David Elder's Texas Eats uh -huh. on Saturdays and then BKD on Sundays. Sundays yeah. And I'm kind of like, Texas Eats makes me hungry. Yeah. Behind the kitchen door makes me never want to eat. Not more. so much. You had a really good point, though. Hearing some of the, you know, disgusting, devastating details. How are they still getting an 82? I don't know. That's... I think maybe it's like if you have your first time mm. vendor, they give you so many days. Yeah. But then if you don't, then yeah, like you get shut down. 10 days. All right, yeah. speaking of disgusting and devastating, the weather. Yeah, the weather has been very hot. In fact, yesterday made our ninth day in a row where we have either tied or broken a record. Yesterday, our high was 104. That beat a record of what a... Uh, Pardon me, yesterday our high was 105. That beat a record of 104 set back in 1969. We have consistently tied or beaten records since August 4th. That's nine days in a row. Today, it's going to be hard for us to get to the record of 106, but we'll be close. 104 for the high temperature. We're probably not going to get to that record, but still just as hot outside. What's the difference between 104 and 106, really, when you get down to it? However, after t today, take a look at how forecast Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We'll be close to breaking or tying records every single day of this upcoming week, even on Tuesday when we have a small chance for those north of San Antonio to see an isolated shower or storm. We're starting off the day with clouds, though. That's what's going to allow for us to trim off a degree or two from the high, but it's still going to be hot because these clouds are quickly going to clear. It's 81 degrees. South winds at about 15 miles per hour. Humidity is at 85% right now, but the humidity will be coming down in the afternoon, and that means higher fire danger for us in the afternoon. 78 in Kerrville. Good morning in Comfort, where it's 77. In Bernie, 77 degrees, 79 in Lotus, 81 in Divine, 79 in Converse, 81 in New Braunfels, 80 in Gonzales, 79 in Hondo, and 77 in Yavaldi. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly cloudy right now, but by 10 skies will be clearing. It'll be mostly sunny and 94 at noon. South winds today, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So during the peak heat of the day, we're going to have breezy conditions, dry atmosphere. That means high fire danger. Nothing Nothing but sunshine this afternoon, 104 for the high temperature in San Antonio. Again, two degrees shy of a record. Hot just about everywhere, including out to the west, where it'll be 106 in Del Rio, 106 in Eagle Pass, 107 in Creso Springs. Laredo, you're going to be at 109 today. 104 Gonzalez, 102 in Kerrville, 100 in Rock Springs. And a little bit closer to San Antonio, around the metro area, it'll be 105 in New Braunfels and Seguin. 105 in Divine, 101 in Bernie, and 105 in Bandera. Looking at the weather setup across the nation, a lot of the northern tier of the U.S. getting some good, decent summer rain today. We are not going to be seeing any rain. That heat high is still firmly in place, and it's going to be the dominant weather pattern over the coming days. Tomorrow, 105 in San Antonio, but notice that across North Texas, temperatures actually fall. That's because there's going to be a weak cool front moving through North Texas tomorrow. It, it'll bring rain as far south as Waco and maybe early Tuesday morning to parts of the hill country. 
but that front is going to completely fall apart as it moves through San Antonio. We'll see drier air behind that front, perhaps an isolated shower, but the chance for rain is only 10% and it's still going to be hot. 104 in San Antonio on Tuesday, and then that heat high will continue to build in and continue to give us very hot temperatures in the week ahead. By Thursday, we'll be even hotter, 106 for the high temperature on Thursday. So highs will range anywhere from 103 to 100 six in the coming days. High fire danger continues and Saturday will be our 54th 100 degree day. I do not see over the next seven to 10 days an end in sight for the 100 degree weather. I am hoping by this time next week we could see a change, but we really will not know until this time next week if we're going to see a change in that weather pattern. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. 650, 80 degrees. Researchers in Egypt have made a discovery that dates back to 41 million years ago. What was found and why it's so important to the whale species? All right, taking a live look out at the roadways, we have a few people out and about, maybe headed to church early, maybe headed out to do some tax-free weekend shopping, doing what they can early, trying to beat the heat. If you do have plans today, do it early. Try to avoid those triple-digit Days. Oh, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, four, six, fireball four, daily four, three, eight, five, six, fireball six. All right, so are you still playing? Uh, cash five? Cash five? Every now and then, yeah. Okay. Get like two bucks from it. Might as well. Good return on you your spend investment. Spend one dollar, get two bucks back. Look at that. I wish we could double every investment. <laughs> look at that. Okay, okay, look at this cash five numbers. Eight, 12, 13, 14, 34, your lotto, Texas. 15, 19, 31, 38, 43, 49. And here we go. Is this the first Powerball since like the big uh, big mm -hmm. 1.5 billion? Well, that was a mega ball. Right. But yeah, this one's climbing. It's getting there. Okay. Almost at your line of demarcation I think there? so. Okay. Here are your numbers. 19, 21, 37, 50, 65, Powerball 26, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. So researchers discovering the fossil that may be the smallest whale species known to science. So it dates back, get this, about 41 million years ago. It's been named after Pharaoh King Tut, also known to so many people. Probably the most famous pharaoh. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective. The whale estimated to have weighed, get this, only as much as 400 pounds, only 8 feet long. Only so, 400. Only 400 pounds. That's like me after a buffet. <laughs> Paleontologists still working in the area where the fossil was discovered. They say it's a good, there's a good chance they could find even earlier fully aquatic whales. Well, archaeologists have uncovered the lost remains of Teotihuacan village in Mexico City. Based on the ceramics found around the site, experts date the village to be around 1,500 years old. They found three bodies, one child and two adults were also discovered. Archaeologists believe the village may have housed a community of fishermen, gatherers and artisans as well. All right, look at that time now, 655, 80 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Or not. Okay. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, remembering Zachary Colley Moreno. He was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died in a Wisconsin plane crash a few weeks ago. We'll hear from his grandmother on how his legacy will live on. And we have a leading essay double feature today at 8 a.m. Speaking with city manager Eric Walsh, talking about how you can have your voice heard when it comes to making our city's budget. Then at 8.30 a.m., Southside Superintendent Rolando Ramirez joining us live just the day before students head back to school tomorrow morning. 81 degrees. It's going to be another triple-digit day. Is there any hope in sight? Sarah Spivey will let us know in her forecast in just a bit. All right, good morning. Happy Sunday, 8 a.m. this Sunday. It is August 13th. Thank good you so morning. much for starting the morning with us. So we kind of just talked about it. It is back to school for so many students tomorrow morning. Right. For so many families, this is the last Sunday. And I, I got to like say, the last hurrah. it's the last hurrah if you do want to go out and about, run the errands, have some family time. Do maybe that. 
tax free shopping. Tax free shopping. Do it early. Because, Sarah, what were you saying? Afternoon, like noon to six, is just miserable. Yeah, a great, great forecast there, Max. It is miserable afternoon. We'll be up to 104 this afternoon. We do have some clouds out there right now. Take a look outside as we look off. You can see off in the distance there. We've got uh, the downtown San Antonio skyline and it is cloudy to start the day. It's 82 degrees, mostly cloudy south winds at about 10 miles per hour already feels like it's near 90 because humidity is at 82%. But later on today, that humidity will be coming down in the afternoon and skies will be clearing. We'll already see clearing here in the next couple of hours. 94 at noon, mostly sunny 104 for the high temperature today. High fire danger southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now in the week ahead, we're going to be watching the ERCOT grid very carefully. There's a couple of days there where uh, the supply and the demand are going to come close to each other. I'll have a look at the state of the grid coming up in just a bit, and we'll talk about a scorcher of a week with only a very small rain chance. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A woman waking up in the hospital this morning after being shot at a gas station in downtown San Antonio. So take a look. This was the scene under Valero in the 900 block of West Hildebrand Avenue. Now, officers there are telling us they found the woman shot in the head and in the chest. She was rushed to a nearby hospital. At last check, still in critical condition. Police say the suspect is a man, but they don't have much more information. If you have any info that can help in the investigation, you're asked to call police immediately. Dozens of people released balloons with messages inside in honor of Zachary Cali Moreno yesterday. We first told you about Zach's story a few weeks ago. He was one of the two New Braunfels passengers who died following a plane crash that happened in Wisconsin. His family says they hope they sent one final message to Zach with the balloon release yesterday. Want to let him know that his legacy will go on and his passion will go on as much as we can possibly do that for him. Right now on KSAT.com, we have details of a scholarship fund the commemorative Air Force in San, San Marcos has set up in Zach's name. All right, you have one last chance today to save a little extra cash before heading back to school. Sending your kids back to class. For every $100 you spend this weekend, you can save about $8 on qualified items like clothes, shoes, backpacks, school supplies. There's a full list of items that are not under tax-free weekend exemptions. We have that list. Everything you can and cannot save money on, just head to KSAT.com. And if you're heading out to get some of these deals, the east side of I-10 and Loop 410 interchange will be shut down today. The east and westbound lanes of I-10 and all northbound lanes of Loop 410 will not be open because road work will last there through tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. We have some alternate routes posted for you over on KZAT.com. Just sign up for push alerts on our KSF app so you never miss a traffic update. All right, the city of San Antonio expected to grow our budget to $3.7 billion this year. It seems like a lot because it is. It is a 9% increase from last year's budget. So joining us in today's leading essay segment to explain how the budget gets formed is city manager Eric Walsh. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so, so much of this time we focus in on key issues, which we will get to, but let's start big picture. What are the, the first steps in forming our city's budget? What do those steps look like? So the, the, the first step, there's a couple of them. Uh, you know, the, the council generally in the springtime comes together and, and develops kind of from their perspective as a group what our major priorities are that need to be addressed. Um, and, and so we go through that. And then uh, this year we did something a little bit different. We hired a, an independent company to come in and do a statistically valid survey of residents uh, to give us an additional layer of, of input. And, and, and Max, I'll tell you that it was very consistent with what the council said. It, that gives me a great framework to, to work over the summer to put together that, that proposed uh, document. So there is a proposed budget out there, 9% larger than last year. So where does that extra money come from? So a, a lot of it, most of that is coming from our construction side. Um, a lot of capital investment. Um, those are all included with our voter approved bond program. Um, and, and those are projects and funding that we already had in place um, based on debt issuances. So um, that's the majority of it. There's a, uh, we're seeing a 6% increase in our general revenue 
and about a 5% increase in our general expenses for next year. So now we can dive into the nitty gritty. The proposed San Antonio mm -hmm. Police Department budget comes in at $570.6 million. That's a 7.8% increase. You know, why the, the big jump in budget and what hopes to be done? So we, uh, we're, we're proposing that 105 police officer positions, uh, they're the most we've ever added in any one year. Um, the, 100 of those will go into patrol uh, to um, you know, improve staffing, uh, primarily to increase our visibility and give officers a little bit of breathing room uh, so that they're not running from call to call on some shifts. Our, our uh, long-term three-year plan is to add 360 and so um, uh, this is the first year of that of that effort. Um, those five, the, the other five that we're adding, we're, we're looking to expand um, capacity and throughput uh, out at the police academy. Right now, over the last five years, um, on a normal basis, we're graduating about 105, 159, 160 cadets, and, and we're hoping to push that up to 235 uh, beginning next year. So, you know, huge investment. It's one of the primary uh, responsibilities of any municipality is uh, public safety and and we want to make sure that we've got the the resources out there to continue to grow or continue to address a growing community i mean we're we're continuing to grow and and um uh, we get two million 911 calls a year and eric over the last year it seems like animal care services have had to respond to a number growing of calls as well so that's addressed in the budget with a 26 percent increase in funds but do you think that's enough well, it's not, um, and and part of what I laid out to the council last week is that we're going to have to incrementally increase funding in, in in those areas over the next three years. Um, the three the three big areas of ACS that are in the proposed budget is uh, increased enforcement, uh, increased uh, uh, funding set aside to work with our rescue partners to to uh, keep our live release rate out of our facility high. Um, and then third is uh, beefing up our funding for spay neuter. In, in, uh, you've got to be able to do all three at once to really make an impact. And uh, I think I think fiscal year 24 is a good starting point. 26% it, it, is a large increase, um, but there are, um, you know, I shared with the council last week. We we get 50,000 311 calls for uh, aggressive dogs. Uh, neglect or cruelty, and uh, we don't have the resources currently to respond to all those. We, we respond to 44% of those calls, and so having the resources and planning for them um, and uh, uh, is, is critical. It, it, it is the only city service where you may call through on one and, and six times out of ten, uh, right now you're not going to get a response, and, and from my perspective, it's unacceptable. So, the, so what we laid out to council last week was a plan to to get there uh, over three years, and and uh, you know we're we're launching off into the the council process part of this uh, process where we'll have detailed work sessions and a lot of community input. All right, we're running out of time, but I want you to answer these last two questions. So I'm going to bring them into one big question. You mentioned it a, a couple questions ago. Our city is growing. We're seeing it growing upward and outward. How does the city address that growing infrastructure? You talked about the additional public safety requirements, but what about our roads? You know, what about CPS, sewer lines? We are growing. And then, last question for you, I know we're throwing it into one. How can people have their voices heard in finalizing this budget? All right, let me hit the last question first. So beginning next week, over the next two weeks, we've got budget town halls uh, in every city district and uh the available the dates and times and locations are available there online uh please participate it's key and and uh and and uh and let us know what you think uh, we'll take all that feedback back to council um how we plan for that max you have to plan for it right uh, both from a, uh, a financial standpoint but also from an execution standpoint the, the work we're doing uh, out at the airport and the new expansion uh, the implementation of the 2022 bond, um, making sure that we are laying the work out um, over the next three to five years that needs to be done, because we can't do it all in one year. 
uh, but more importantly, making sure we have the resources and we're making the smart financial decisions as a city to be able to, to uh, continue to afford and be thoughtful about how we spend that money. Uh, it, it is, it is uh, the balancing act is doing that from a growing community, but then also maintaining what we have. Um, and um, we're, uh, uh, we just got, the, the city just got uh, uh, reaffirmed as a, a AAA bond rating um, uh, city, uh, one of the largest cities in the in the country with the best bond rating. And, um, you know, we'll continue to do that. Um, it's But you've got a plan, just like you would your household budget. So. Okay, well, San Antonio City Manager Eric Walsh, thank you so much for taking your time to join us this morning and break down the budget. For our viewers, you can catch this interview in full later on KSAT.com. All right, time now, 812, 81 degrees. School is back in session for some, but that doesn't mean the hot weather is packing up the pools. We'll tell you some exciting news from San Antonio's Park and Recreation. And a quick live look out of the Alamo City, 81 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast in just a few moments. Morning and welcome back. So it's no secret, it's hot. Yeah. Here's another thing that's not a secret. Heat's not going away right now. <laughs> so San Antonio Parks and Rec extending their pool season for at least another month. Nine pools remaining open on weekends until September 24th. Two of those will be open for those needed to cool off during the week for fullest locations. Just head to ksat.com. The article should be on the homepage. So Sarah Spivey, I gotta say, is September 24th even long enough? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think I think it will be because okay. it's eventually going to be fall. And but we're stuck in this weather pattern for at least the next seven days, guys. Mm. It's hard for me to see an end definitively of the triple digit weather. And you can see that today it's going to be hot. The white numbers here are the forecast highs. The yellow numbers are the records. I think we'll be shy of a record here in San Antonio by two degrees. We're still going to be hot, though, 104. And as you can see, most of the state of Texas going to be above 100 degrees. We're going to be watching the ERCOT grid very carefully. Today and tomorrow, supply should meet demand no problem. But at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, the supply is going to come close to the demand. The supply being the blue line here and the demand being the red bar. You can see at 7 p.m., once we start to lose the solar uh, energy for the day, uh, there's still a high demand at 7 p.m. because it's so hot. So we'll watch very carefully Tuesday uh, for that. For now, though, ERCOT does not expect any disruption in service or anything like that. Now on Tuesday, there is going to be a weather pattern change for parts of Texas. Notice that the future cast shows that heat high still maintaining strength around San Antonio. It's going to be 105 tomorrow, but tomorrow in North Texas, temperatures are going to fall below 100 degrees. Even in the panhandle, it's only going to be in the 80s. That's because a weak cool front will be moving through North Texas tomorrow. It'll bring an opportunity for rain in Waco and parts of Central Texas, maybe even an ice isolated shower as far as northern Kerr County tomorrow in the evening hours, but it's still going to be hot here in San Antonio and the catches. This front is going to fall apart as it moves through San Antonio. It's not going to have any cooler weather with it. It will, however, bring in some drier air from the north. All that's going to do is increase our fire danger on Tuesday, so it's still going to be hot 104 degrees on Tuesday behind that weakening front, and there could be one or two isolated showers. We're only talking about a 10% chance on Tuesday. That chance is there and it's a little bit different of a weather pattern, but the big story is the heat is still going to continue as that heat high builds back in from the west. Most of next week is going to be anywhere from 103 to 106, including Thursday when we'll be at 106 here in San Antonio, 110 in Del Rio. Bottom line, very small chance for shower on Tuesday. Otherwise, the big time heat continues for the next seven days. I am hopeful that this time next weekend we will have a weather pattern change for you in the week ahead. But for this upcoming week, it is more of the same, my friends. High fire danger and high heat. 82 degrees outside right now. Some clouds this morning. We got up to 105 yesterday. With clouds sticking around for another couple of hours, we'll be at 104 today. So still hot. 82 in Del Rio. 79 increases Springs. Good morning in Kerrville. We're at 78. 81 
81 in New Braunfels. It's uh, 81 in Gonzales, 83 in Castroville, 80 in Rio Medina, and 78 in Bandera. Look at this KSAT 12 hour forecast for you. Clearing skies by 11. We're already going to be at 90 degrees, 94 at noon. Sunny in the afternoon, 100 by 2. And then in the later afternoon hours, 104 for the high temperature, still 99 degrees by 8 p.m. Reminder that fire danger is high today. High fire danger, no campfires or burn piles, please. Avoid using tools that create sparks. It's the weekend. Some folks like to do yard work, but try to avoid using chainsaws. Dispose of cigarettes properly. Don't drag trailer chains and do not park your car on grass. Otherwise, again, this is the, the forecast high for the day today. 102 Kerrville, 106 Del Rio, 102. 8 Catula, 105 Pleasanton, 103 Canyon Lake, 104 in Gonzales. And look at the forecast over the next several days. Again, a bit of a depressing forecast for us. There is that slim, a sliver of a chance of rain on Tuesday. By Saturday, we'll have our 54th 100 degree day. Oh, yeah, with that news, we'll send you to break and we'll be right back with more news. <laughs> The Spurs Holy Trinity are all finally in the Hall of Fame together after Tony Parker was inducted this weekend. Other Spurs members added to the Hall of Fame this year. Oh, we also saw Pat Gasol, Becky Hammond, Shouts, and of course, head coach Craig Popovich. Marking the first time a coach and player inducted together. So Tony Parker presented by his Hall of Fame teammates, Monty Ginobili and Tim Duncan. Puts a smile on my face just thinking about them all. So Pop presented the big three and... Of course, David Robinson. Becky Hammond there to be inducted as a WNBA legend. But when you're also the assistant head coach for the Spurs for eight years, you still are a spur to San Antonio. Okay, so from the Spurs to the Cowboys. Cowboys young studs put on a show in Dallas preseason debut, taking on Jacksonville. Rookie running back Deuce Vaughn standing a solid five foot five, making plays, racking up 56 yards along with touchdown. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Cowboys did not win. Mm. It's preseason, so it really doesn't matter. We got to see some of the, the cool highlights. We got to, you know, see some of the depth. Uh, Cooper Rush looked great. But Cowboys lost to the Jaguars 28-23. Next up, Cowboys in Seattle this Saturday at 9 p.m. In some better preseason opener news, Buffalo Bills' DeMar Hamlin played in his first preseason game yesterday. So we reported back in January about when he went into cardiac arrest that month. Now Hamlin made three tackles during the home game taken on the Indianapolis Colts. Doctors cleared Hamlin to resume football activities back in April. He's made steady progress rejoining his teammates during the preseason. And I want to go back to the Spurs for a second because it was cool. Uh, obviously, Tony did a bunch of interviews. Yeah. And they asked him, you know, which was your favorite finals that you won? And you'd think it would be the finals that he won finals MVP. But he actually said 2014 was his favorite okay. finals because they came off the 2013 devastating Ray Allen shot. Mm. So 2014, he was like, we need to remind the world that we are back. And he's like, if you look at the passing and the team camaraderie from that year, it was unmatched across the league. Well, hopefully it can be matched this season. Look at you. Wemby's back. All right, time now, 826, 82 degrees. Okay, don't go anywhere. That's right. Southside Superintendent Rolando Ramirez joining us live in the next half hour. We're going to be talking about what students and families should expect first day of school tomorrow, plus the district on the rise. We're going to explain in just a few moments. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, August 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sunday mornings and actually, you know, s Saturday mornings, I like to like have a slow start and mm. stuff, but because of the heat, I just always feel rushed to get out the door okay. to get like the day started and get everything I have to do outside done early. So I feel like there's no lazy summer morning, Sarah, because these triple digits, they're dangerous. Yeah, they are, especially in the afternoon when it is the hottest. And today we're going to be up to 104. In addition to the heat safety, I'd like to remind you of fire safety too. Red flag warning in effect today for all the counties you see here in pink, although all of us around South Central Texas should be careful as uh, there's a lot of dry vegetation out there. We just haven't seen any rain over the last several days. It's 82 degrees as we start our day here in San Antonio. There are some clouds out there right now. 78 in Bandera. Good morning in Kerrville. 
Seattle, where it's 78 degrees, 80 in Bulverde, 81 in Hondo, 80 at Stinson, 79 in Yavaldi, and 82 in Gonzales. We're going to quickly warm with clearing skies. Some clouds out there right now, but by noon, it's going to be mostly sunny in 94, 104 for the high temperature today. Southeast winds at 10 to 15. Again, a breeze uh, contributing to the high fire danger this afternoon. Now, coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about a very slim chance for rain. And yesterday, we had our ninth record setting day in a row. Impressive to see this kind of heat. Will we hit the record today? I'll have the details on what the record is for this Sunday coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Sarah, thank you. ABC is reporting that as of now, 93 people have died from the wildfires in Maui, making it the deadliest wildfire in the United States in the last 100 years. More than 2,200 structures are destroyed, with 85% of those being residential, and more than 2,100 acres are burned. FEMA says the cost to rebuild is estimating at $5.5 billion dollars. The cause of the fire is still not known at this time, but residents are puzzled and angered over the lack of warnings. And those residents, those families, giving ABC an inside look of what it feels like in those harrowing moments when the fires were just starting. ABC's Gio Benita shows us how volunteers now stepping out and trying to help. This morning, communities trying to recover in the wake of the deadliest U.S. wildfire in a century. Overnight, that grim reality from officials. At least 93 lives lost since the devastating inferno broke out on Tuesday. Now, we were here just two days ago, and the number was smaller, and it's going to continue to rise. We want to... FEMA saying the fire damaged more than 2,200 structures and burned through more than 2,100 acres. The devastation is so complete that you see metals twisted in ways that you can't imagine, and you see nothing uh, from organic structures left whatsoever. The agency deploying more than 150 workers to the island to assist in recovery efforts. Across Maui, people sharing harrowing tales of survival. Annalise Cochran was able to escape the fire by jumping into the ocean, telling me she was clinging to a wall for more than seven hours. So how did you survive? I climbed over the seawall into the ocean, and while um, the fire was happening and the cars were exploding, uh, we would duck into the water and we would put our mouths as close to the surface as we could so that we could breathe. And now, anger is directed at the local government. Residents saying they were not given enough warning. Our Melissa Don catching up with people outside Lahaina who were having trouble returning to their homes. I saw no management of the situation whatsoever. There was one police car with like the little blue lights flashing. Nothing about there's a fire, evacuate, get out. No fire trucks. I never saw a drop of water going through. There was no alert that went off, no alarm, uh, no text that was telling us that we needed to evacuate. I was with my neighbors outside watching smoke billowing at 80 miles an hour over my apartment. And that's when we saw flames about one block away, kind of catty corner across. A you got no wall. warning at all. Absolutely no warning. Authorities responding overnight saying that the speed and intensity of the flames complicated efforts to warn citizens. There were multiple fires at the same time and the circumstance was greatly complicated also by the heat and the speed with which the fire spread, destroying a great deal of infrastructure. Over time, we'll be able to figure out if we could have better protected people. That was ABC's Gio Benitez reporting and Maui Maui Kids over on Stone Oak Parkway is offering to help the San Antonio community with donations towards the American Red Cross of Hawaii. So if you'd like to make a donation, you can take it by their location. They are on the intersection of Stone Oak Parkway and Hebner Road. We're back here at home, students all across San Antonio, some back in the classroom, some headed back to the class tomorrow, Alma Heights, East Central, Harlandale, Lackland, Northeast, Southside ISD, Uvalde CISD, all starting tomorrow morning, SAISD and Shirt Civil Universal City. They begin on Tuesday, Floresville, Judson and Randolph Field ISD beginning on Wednesday. So obviously a huge week for so many families. We have a full list of all the back to school dates that you need to know. Head to KSAT.com. But speaking of Southside ISD, it is a district we have been talking about a lot recently. It's a district on the rise, not only a rise in buildings, businesses, and rise in population, but also a rise in academic accolades. So joining us in today's leading essay segment is Southside ISD Superintendent Rolando Ramirez. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Good morning. On behalf of Southside ISD, thank you for having me. So, Superintendent, we just talked about it, district on the rise. What does enrollment look like? And speaking of on the rise, does that pertain to the long-term future of Southside ISD? The enrollment looks fantastic. Last year, we had uh, more than 450 students than we had the previous year. This year already, before the start of the school year, we have 200 more students than what we ended this past year. Uh, the demographic study that, that was done this year shows potentially 17,000 uh, homes being built in our area. So this increase in enrollment uh, is, is embraced by our school district, it's welcome. We want you know, our students to know that Southside is the choice when it comes to deciding which school district to attend. So talking about the district growth, what has the recent academic performance been? So this past year, we had a, a district rating of an 88. Uh, for this year, the uh, accountability ratings won't be released by the state until September. But by doing the, uh, the comparison from this year's results to the previous year's results, and even though this year's test, there's been added rigor with the embedded writing and science, social studies and reading, the new item types uh, that have been part of the, this assessment, it's no longer just a multiple, multiple choice test. And we have improved in every subject, every uh, grade level in comparison to the previous year. So we've been talking about teacher recruitment. Obviously, it's been tough around the country. How are y'all able to maintain your recruitment and retain talent? We, we truly value uh, our employees, and we've always said that we should pay uh, our employees weight in gold. Southside has the highest starting teacher pay than any uh, school district in San Antonio. And it ranks in the top three uh, highest paid positions from custodial uh, workers, bus drivers, paraprofessional, our technicians. So we feel that, you know, we have very high expectations and that you know, our staff uh, should be paid accordingly. And I think that helps with the recruiting efforts and the retention of our staff. OK, so the first day of school is tomorrow. What are you most excited for and what should parents and students know? We are so excited to see our students back. It's already been a month and a half since we've seen the students who attended summer school. We have seen some of our, our students uh, that participate in the fine arts and, and the athletics already. But tomorrow we get to see all of our students and uh, the ones who are returning and the ones who are new to the district. Uh, so we're excited for that. And this year's theme is the A-team. Together, everyone achieves more. And it's a collective effort from our students, staff, and community to reach that A and open up all the opportunities for, for our students. So working together as a team, we're going to try to reach that A this year. All right, so we, we have a little extra time, so I'm going to throw one more question at you. Yesterday, we had a photographer, Santiago, on the scene of the new nursing program on Southside ISD's campus. You know, what does that mean for the Southside ISD community, all the new families living there, and the students who get to see these brand new facilities right on their front door? Okay, it looks like we lost the superintendent. We lost signal. But if you are interested in learning more about that story or hearing more from the interview, you can check it out right now. Just head to ksat.com. Time is just about 840, 82 degrees. Okay, stick around. We're going to take a look at some trending topics on ksat.com, including a pop-up Alice in Wonderland bar. Oh, what do you think it? Cheshire. Did I say that right? I don't know. Cheshire I was going to make a Mad Hatter joke. Cheshire? But Chesh what? Cheshire? Sure, we'll go with that. Sure, sure. You know, I don't know about that, but I do know about this. It is 82 <laughs> degrees already. It is humid out there. It is not going to get any cooler. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for full forecast in just a few moments. Good morning. Coming up on this week, we'll sort through the legal chaos overshadowing the 2024 presidential race with a new special counsel on the Hunter Biden investigation just announced and another indictment of Donald Trump expected in the coming days. We'll speak to Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie and Democratic Congressman Jamie Raskin this morning. All that plus the powerhouse roundtable coming up on this week. 
Okay, trending now on KSAT.com. Are you in the Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollow, well, Are you Halloween okay? <laughs> spirit? It's just so hot. It was hard to say Halloween. Uh, well, here's some good news. Spirit Halloween stores, of course, they're ready to pop up all over San Antonio. Head to KSAT.com to see if a location near you is already open. And don't forget to grab some Halloween party supplies while you're there. All right, speaking of Halloween plans, put on your calendar right now. Alice in Wonderland pop-up bar happening October 19th. Yeah, put it in the calendar because odds are we're going to forget. It's going <laughs> October 19th through November 16th at Alamo Plaza. A 90-minute topsy-turvy immersive journey. Your ticket gets you three Wonderland-themed drinks. Interesting. Three yeah, drinks. I know, right? The opportunity to make your own drink with the Mad Hatter. Okay. Okay, but if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to summer, yet I'm ready. There's a long list of ideas for fun ways to spend time indoors, from the aquarium to adventure parks. There's some perfect ways to celebrate the last few days of summer break. Also things like the Duseum, Woody Museum, and we're not able to say goodbye to the summer heat anytime soon, Sarah. No, we are not. You know, technically last year in 2009 and 2011 have more 100 degree days than this summer, but we have had hotter heat. Mm. So take a look at San Antonio's record heat streak. So yesterday we got up to 105, which is the ninth day in a row that we have seen uh, records broken or tied at the San Antonio International Airport. Impressively hot since Oct August 4th. Rather, we have seen a record high or tied a record high in San Antonio. And today is going to be hard for us to get to the record. All right. Today we'll, we're forecasting 104, uh, but the the record is 106 uh, set back in 1962, so it'll be difficult for us to get there, uh, but a few degrees shy. But in the coming days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we're likely to see a record or beat a record. So we'll continue with the record challenging heat in the week ahead. It is going to be hot and a lot of people have been saying, well, Sarah, don't you have any good news for me? Can't you just say it's going to get cooler in the next seven to ten days? Well, honestly, it is hard for us to say with any confidence that even after the seven day period, we're going to see a cool down. Unfortunately, 82 degrees outside right now, some clouds out there that's going to shave off a couple of degrees from the high, but it's still going to be hot. Winds are from the south South at 10 miles per hour outside right now. Some clouds early this morning, 75 in Rock Springs. Good morning in Kerrville. It's 79 degrees, 84 in Pleasanton. Let's take a closer look around San Antonio, 81 at Port SA, 81 JBSA Randolph, 83 in New Braunfels and 84 in Castroville. In your KSAT 12 hour forecast, quickly seeing skies clear around noon. It's going to be 94 degrees and mostly sunny. We'll already be at 100 by 2 p.m. And then in the afternoon, 104 for the high high fire danger, particularly in the afternoon when we have lower humidity, a hotter temperatures and winds are going to be from the south southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a little bit of a breeze too. Please use caution today. Try not to create or spread grass fires. 106 in Del Rio, 108 in Catula, 103 in Canyon Lake, 102 in Kerrville, a little bit closer to the San Antonio metro area, 105 in Floresville, 105 in Seguin, 105 in Castroville, 101 in Bernie, 101 in Bulverde, 102 in Kerrville. And the weather setup, you can see that there's a good portion of the nation that's dealing with some showers and storms this morning across the central plains. If only we would be that lucky. We are staying under the influence of this heat high. You know, the heat high it settles over Texas every single summer. It's not unusual. What is unusual is that this one has been particularly strong and we have not seen any relief over the last several days. Now tomorrow we'll be at 105 in San Antonio. There is going to be a slight weather pattern shift for parts of Texas. North Texas will be cooler on Monday below 100 degrees all behind a very weak cool front. This cool front will bring some rain to areas in central Texas, but the catch is the front is going to fall apart as it moves through San Antonio, bringing only drier air in from the north. And so fire danger will be 
pretty high on Tuesday. It's still going to be hot near 104. There is a small 10% chance that you could see an isolated shower from that front, but generally it's going to continue to be hot as that heat high will redevelop and strengthen over Texas. We'll be at 106 on Thursday and again this week hard to find any relief in the forecast. Saturday will be our 54th 100 degree day. Again, I am hoping for a weather change next week, but that's all I can do right now is hope. That's all we can do. I can't give you any reassurances that next week is going to be any cooler than this week. Eventually it will cool down at one point. Eventually. I mean, we're already <laughs> talking about Halloween, the spirit yeah, store. Let's just stay so. in the spirit yeah, yeah. of the spirit Halloween. That sounds like oh, a yeah. good yeah. plan. And you can drink some spirits at the, uh, oh my God, the pop-up you know, shop. Three drinks? That's three drink, crazy. Yeah. Mm. I'm just saying. Things are getting. Get your ticket at KSAT.com. <laughs> All right, time now is 8.50, 82 degrees. Okay, you heard from Southside ISD superintendent today, but tomorrow in GMSA, it, it's a full Southside ISD takeover. That's right. I'm going to be out there joining all the kids and all the teachers from Southside High School, Menchaca Early Childhood Center. We're going to be talking about the district strategy to tackle the nationwide, seemingly nationwide teacher shortage. And we're going to be checking in, making sure schools are ready for the new school year. You're not going to miss it. Well, we just got the pollen count in. Molds are low at 450. This is very, very uh, expected because it's been so dry that the only allergen out there is molds and even molds are low. 10 a.m. We're going to be at 86 and clearing out there. It's a little cloudy right now. 94 at noon and mostly sunny. 104 for the high. Breezy winds from the south southeast 10 to 15 contributing to high fire danger, especially in the afternoon and then just adding up with the triple digits over the next several days. We're going to be at or near 105 each day with only the slimmest chances for an isolated shower on Tuesday. All right. I'm not going to lie to you, Sarah. This is what I've been waiting for. He's been talking about this all morning. This is one of my favorite things to do each and every year. These are the 10 finalists for the Te State Fair of Texas for the foods for the Big Tex Choice Awards. Came out this week. So the food items, are, I'm salivating even reading the list. <laughs> Food items, they're creative, they're unconventional, and they're almost all deep fried. Okay, let's talk about savory. First off is the deep fried cheesy crab tater bites. Eh, let's go. Might be a little too much. This deep fried pho, though, if mm, y'all can pho, scroll down. Pho, yeah. Pho, look, that looks amazing. That does look amazing. I'm not sold on this. So there's loaded fries pizza. So basically it's like cheese fries with bacon on, mm. on top of pizza. It's I'm basic. Not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not about that one. This one is... It's oxalant. It's ox. Soul, soul roll. It's uh, beef oxtails. Savory. I mean, it's in the description. Delicious. And let's just skip to the desserts because we only have 45 seconds left in the show. This Look Biscoff Delight. Oh, yeah. Looks delightful. Yes. It, well done. Mm -hmm. I see what you did there. Uh, and then, come on, the bourbon, banana, caramel, Can, sopa pias. I mean, it's wrong. picturesque. I put this on a wall somewhere. This is beautiful. <laughs> okay, but I am such a cherry pie girl. And you the, literally said, you're like, I love cherry I, pie. It's like my favorite dessert. So this Fernie's fried cherry pie in the sky. Ugh. I think we need to take a GMSA weekend trip to the state fair. Let's go. And do a taste test. I agree. Hey, have a great rest of your day. Y'all have a good Sunday.